Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. It's cold, but it's a sellout. 15 degrees, 10,000 or more fans from Cleveland. You're going to hear a lot of shouting from both sides as the Browns, hungry for a playoff spot. They've not been in the playoffs since 72. Meet the young Cincinnati Bengals. And Sam Ritigliano of Cleveland knows that the Cincinnati team is ready to play. They've won their last three in a row. Merlin Olsen, will the weather be a factor? It is cold. It certainly could be. Uh, the part of the field that does not see the sun is frozen. And I'm sure that both coaches, Forrest Gregg, right in the middle of your picture there, are concerned about what that frozen area of the field will do to their two teams. The advantage traditionally passes to a passing team, not a running team, on a frozen field, and to the offense rather than the defense. Leosa Montgomery deep for the black jersey Bengals, and the Browns' Cockcroft kicks it off. Aims it toward that left corner. Montgomery at the 20. And down he goes at the 27-yard line. There's the first indication of the frozen end of the field. That end of the field will give the runners and receivers trouble. To the left, it's not so bad. The lineup for the Cincinnati Bengals. Jack Thompson from Washington State, the quarterback. Alexander, LSU, Big Pete Johnson, four straight 100-yard games. Receivers, Pat McAnally for the injured bass. Leading receiver is Ross, the tight end. Isaac Curtis, the wide receiver. The line for Cincinnati, Bush at center, Bushnock and Montoya, the guards, Munoz and Wilson at tackle. Thompson completes it in the flat. Out to the 30. Archie Griffin drops it the 31-yard line. Dick Ambrose and company making the stop. Make that uh, the 32-yard line as they spot it. Defensively for Cleveland. 3-4 alignment. Marshall has had a fine year. So is Bradley. Two youngsters with a veteran, Lyle Alzado. Four linebackers, Hall, very active, R.L. Jackson. Dick Ambrose, the leading tackler, and Clay Matthews. Ron Bolton and Clinton Burrell at the corners. The all-time interceptor in Cleveland history, Tom Darden, and Clarence Scott at safety. Up the middle, Pete Johnson. And he's close to a first down at the 37-yard line. Ambrose again from the University of Virginia led the defensive charge. Pete Johnson has to be the biggest active back in the NFL. Watch him as he just bulldozes his way right over the top of R.L. Jackson for extra yardage. They're counting on Johnson to keep the defense on it today. They'll use him inside as a battering ram. They'll come off of his play with play action passing and shots to the outside. Berlin Pete Johnson missed five games with an injury this year, and Cincinnati lost all five. They're six and four when he's in the lineup. Third and less than a yard. And it's Johnson burrowing across the 37, and it appears he has a first down. It's going to be close. I asked some of the uh, Bengal players how much Johnson weighed now, and they said, well, when? On the Thursday when they weigh him <laughs> in or on Sunday? Because on Thursday he weighed about 258 pounds, but I'll bet he's well over 260 today. Pete Johnson, also an academic All-American at Ohio State, where he set Big Ten and Ohio State records for touchdowns, 58. And he got just enough for the first down. Brian Seip waiting his turn on the sidelines. Always wondered about in the cold weather, the quarterback that has to wait his turn. He warms up, and then there's a five, six-minute delay before he can get his hands in the ball game. Well, that's a bad today because Seip is standing in the sunshine and walking on that field yesterday a lot warmer over there than it is in the shade. First down at the 37. Pete Johnson. Rolls his way to the 44-yard line. Coming up to make the tackle was Tom Darden, 27, University of Michigan All-American. Bengals would like to believe that Pete Johnson can do some for them what uh, Earl Campbell does for Houston, although Johnson is not quite as fast and does not have some of the acrobatic ability of Earl Campbell. He certainly punishes defensive backs much in the same way. Only six feet tall, if that, and 250 pounds or more. Not a lot to grab onto except muscle. Second and three. Tight end Ross lining up on the right side. Same play. Johnson cutting back and running into Alzado. He's to the 45-yard line. That'll be 
short of a first down. We've got a flag down, but Lyle Alzado on that last play pursued all the way across okay. the field. One of the Im important ingredients of a good defense is pursuit. You see Alzado getting inside of Munoz, sliding all the way across, getting good position, and takes, uh, takes the ball carrier down on the far side. Penalty marks off against the Browns and a first down. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask, defense, first down. Ball spotted at midfield. First down for Cincinnati. They've taken the opening kickoff, a couple of first downs, and they're about to move into Cleveland Brown territory as Thompson brings them out of the huddle. McAnally and the tight end Ross on the left side. Curtis split far right. Johnson up the middle. And he's to the Cleveland 46-yard line, a gain of four. Henry Bradley from Alcorn State made the tackle. Well, we told you we'd be watching the matchup between Alzado and young Anthony Munoz, the number one draft pick for the Cleveland Browns. Alzado jumped right over the top of that time. Munoz just he took his leg right up. Oh, here, watch it. You'll get a chance to see it. Watch him jump here. Munoz is going to roll up and just take his legs a little bit. Get enough of him to keep him off the tackle. Interesting that uh, the Bengals are running. They're not throwing the ball. And this Cleveland defense, giving up all kinds of yards against the pass, has played pretty well against the run. The only pass is the first play of the game, that little swing pass in the left flat. Thompson on second and six has a man. Isaac Curtis is open, but the pass awry at the 38-yard line. Thompson, who was the third player selected two years ago after Tom Cousineau from Buffalo, Mike Bell of Kansas City, and then Thompson here by Cincinnati. New Orleans takes the early lead against the Patriots, 7-0. And, of course, Cleveland fans will be pulling for the Saints today. They like that cushion, but uh, they obviously would much rather go in with the home field advantage, and they get that if they can win today. Third and six. left formation over the middle oh McAnally is hit at the 40 and a flag goes down McAnally pops hard at the 40 yard line it's an incomplete pass let's kick the flag and McAnally was drilled one of the new rules in the league this year deals with the delivery of a blow to the head and McAnally just absolutely Stroked off his feet by a vicious blow. Watch it yourself here. He's going to be coming in from the left side of your screen. Guard number 27. Watch the shot right there to the head. There's no question about that being a flagrant foul. Here it is again. And boy, in this cold weather, McAnally took about as severe a blow as we've foul. seen all year. Unnecessary roughness. A blow to the face. And the 27 defense. You get the reaction of the crowd. McAnally still on the ground. And that's exactly the kind of blow and the kind of penalty that uh, was installed in the, in the league this year to protect from that kind of action, Dick. An unnecessary part of the game. A defensive back coming up to a receiver who's stretched out like that has many other options. He does not have to go to the head. Now, while we attend to Pat McAnally, a break in the action, we've played nearly four minutes of this first quarter, and Cincinnati is on the march. Back at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, Pat McAnally, wide receiver and punter for the Bengals, still down after a vicious hit. We don't feel it was an intentional foul by Darden. He's playing a very emotional game, an important game, but you just can't have two men collide any more dangerously than that. At full speed, you can understand why McAnally is not on his feet as yet. And there's no question uh, that probably one of the sorriest people on the field about that particular play is Tom Darden. But still, as I said before, you do have options coming to a receiver who stretched out like that, and, and that is not a good option. They're going to require a stretcher to remove McAnally from the field. It's a contact game, and every player who pulls that helmet down over his ears knows there's an injury risk. And when you get in a game with so much importance, these men have played since way back in July to ready themselves for a possible playoff. And for Darden, who's a fine man, one of the most likable guys you'd ever want to meet, 
But he, like every one of the Browns, they know how important it is for them to win. This is the culmination of all that work, and part of that had to be reflected in that punishing tackle. I'm sure if he had it to do over again, he would not have delivered it quite that way. The thing that must be remembered, too, Dick, football itself, the game, is a violent game. And every player on the field has, has accepted those risks as he walks out on the field. At the same time, there is an unwritten code. The players operate under that code, and that does eliminate what we call cheap shots. There are certain players who live outside of that code. Darden is not one. Darden does not have a cheap shot reputation in the NFL. And this, this particular play might be categorized in that way, but Darden is going up to try and knock the ball out. Now, it just catches McAnally right at the throat head area, and there's no question about the viciousness of the shot, but again, I do not feel looking at it here that it was an intentional uh, shot to the head. What concerns you, that whiplash effect, it's much like the injury suffered or the blow to Daryl Stingley that rendered him in a very serious condition for the rest of his life. And let's pray at this moment that McAnally is not severely hurt. And that very sobering evidence of the stretcher being brought onto the field now. Of course, one of the things that happened in the game today, a great deal of caution taken any time a player is unconscious, any time there's an injury to the head and neck area, uh, caution that that is very important but more caution today by far realizing the seriousness of that kind of thing than there ever was in the past yeah, we can all remember 20 years ago where a player would be literally asked to walk off the field with a torn knee or a broken leg to save a timeout you just crawl off the field to save a timeout and the rules are protected that so Pat McAnally whose loss as a wide receiver is only part of the blow to the Bengals. They have also lost their punter today in that injury. And, of course, the primary concern is his own welfare. We've got to wonder who the uh, backup punter is going to be. Uh, they really don't show one. Breach, possibly, the kicker, might be asked to kick, or perhaps another player on the squad who, who might uh, have kicked a little bit in college. We'll check on that and run it down. Jim Breach will be the backup kicker. Breach will, in fact, do it. Place kicker was just joined, and there he is already anticipating that rule. He, of course, uh, being a soccer-style kicker, won't have to make the shoe changes that a, that a uh, straight-ahead kicker would have to make. Uh, of course, the soccer-style kicker able to kick with a regular kicking shoe and punt with the same shoe. We should uh, make one correction. Breach is not from Washington State, although the Cougars would love to have had him up there in Pullman. He went to the University of California at Berkeley and was uh, working for a paper company in Oakland a month ago when the Bengals called him and said, we're looking for a new place kicker. Join us. And Breach has done all of that. In fact, has won the last two games for Cincinnati with field goals right at the gun or in overtime, as the case was last week in Chicago. You might wonder what that is on the foot of Jim Breach. Uh, obviously, a quarterback would keep his hands warm. A kicker? He keeps his foot warm. As he a, does have small feet. I oh was yeah, amazed yeah. yesterday in the locker room. He wears a size five, five <laughs> shoe. He looked like a ballet slipper. Well, to get an idea of how small his feet are, that was just an insulated glove. That wasn't a, <laughs> that's an insulated glove he had on his foot. So this long delay as they attend to the fallen Cincinnati Bengal, Pat McAnally. And they're going to take every precaution in moving him in case there is a neck or spinal injury. And I know of great concern to those who are in the family of this young athlete. There's a good sign. You saw his left hand move up toward his face. So there was movement by McAnally as he reached up with a left hand toward his helmet or face. And they will now take him immediately to full medical attention. See Thompson, the quarterback, leaning in to wish his comrade well. Important to indicate to our viewers, too, that here at the stadium, they will have x-ray facilities, and they can take him in and instantly uh, x-ray him to make certain that there is no uh, hairline fracture, marginal fracture of, of that area. Merlin, as a player, when something like this happens, and it's sobering for all of us, how do, how do the players psychologically, emotionally wipe that out of their mind? very difficult on both sides. I mean, your concern as a player, one of the difficult things for the Bengals will be to detach themselves for their, their great concern for McAnally. He's a very popular member of their team, and they're obviously, their thoughts are with him. They've got to get their minds back into this game, and certainly they are the underdogs in this game. It's their, 
theirs is the concentration most likely to break here in the early going. And the, really the tempo of this game, I think, is going to be determined early, Dick. All right, the Bengals are out of the huddle. First down after the penalty. Personal foul at the 31-yard line. No score. Keith Johnson to the 27-yard line of the Cleveland Browns. We have 11 minutes remaining in the first quarter. Robert L. Jackson of Texas A&M, linebacker for Cleveland with a tackle. Probably the, the most difficult job out there will belong to Tom Darden. who will have to get it out of his mind. And I'm, I'm certain, again, as we said earlier, that had he been given an opportunity to go back and, and hit McAnally in a different way, he certainly would have done it because uh, even though the blow was a very aggressive one and even a vicious one, I'm sure it was unintentional. Minnesota takes the early lead at Houston. They missed the extra point. Kramer to center a touchdown pass. 6 nothing Vikings. Johnson only gets a couple. May have fought to the 24-yard line, which would bring up third down and three. M.L. Harris, you see, the second tight end, teaming with Dan Ross as they book in that offensive line. I think it's talking to Kenny Anderson, the quarterback, injured quarterback of the Bengals. And he was talking about the, the defense of the Browns. He said, the Browns give you a lot of short stuff. They give you a lot of stuff up in front of those linebackers. But you have to be patient to take advantage of it. Jack Thompson is a young quarterback. Does not have a lot of game experience. It will be interesting to see if he can be patient enough to stay with the game plan, to stay with that short stuff, to work it down the field for the touchdown. Steve Kreider has replaced McAnally. He's right. Curtis left. Play action to Johnson. Thompson, he could have run it, but elected to pass to Ross, and it's broken up neatly by Clarence Scott, number 22 for Cleveland. And here comes Jim Breach and a possible field goal attempt. It'll be a fairly long one. One of the advantages that Jack Thompson brings to this team is mobility as a quarterback. He's much more mobile than Kenny Anderson, but he makes a mistake right there has room to run for the first down, had the sure first down, instead chose to rifle the ball to a receiver that was fairly well covered, threw it too hard. We got the mistake right there that the Browns are looking for. Now they're going to try and keep the three-pointer off the board. 42-yard attempt. Good snap. The kick is... Bengals, 
They have not gotten great pressure consistently on the air, but one of the things they did last week in that big victory over Chicago was to put a great deal of pressure on the Bears quarterback, Ben Devin. And they felt that that was one of the reasons for that victory. They're getting some pressure here early on site. And if you're going to beat this passing offense for Cleveland, that's what you have to do. Rucker right, Logan left. The backs are in the pattern. Intercepted and dropped. A bad pass, and Louis Brayton, who had three interceptions last week against Chicago, almost took one off today. And the Bengal fans cheer the defense. Stipe once again getting the blitz here, stunning by the line, and he is buried under a wave. Well advised not to throw that pass. Receiver Newsom obviously extremely well covered by Breeden. They got away with it. They're going to kick it out of there. Johnny Evans under a 10-man rush. Montgomery back at the Cincinnati 38. Short kick. Montgomery at the 43. 45. And to the 48-yard line goes the younger brother of Wilbert Montgomery, the star running back of the Philadelphia Eagles. A 31-yard punt, five-yard return. Flag is down. Against Cleveland, ineligible receiver downfield, or early release by one of the linemen. Nick, while we're waiting for him to sort out that penalty, one quick uh, reflection on the injury to McAnally. I said that the, the shot, I did not feel the shot was intentional. No question that one of the jobs of a defensive back is to go up and take the football loose from those receivers. It looked like Darden was doing that. He was going to the chest area. I think he just got higher than he thought he was going to and got into the head. Uh, many, many fans here in this area, many fans in this stadium would interpret that as being a cheap shot, and there's no question it's, it's a shot that delivered a tremendous hit to the head. We hope McAnally is not seriously injured. We'll give you a report on that as soon as we can. Now with a timeout here in Cincinnati, midpoint of the first quarter, seven and a half minutes have been played. The Bengals have the ball, and the Bengals have the lead. This is Brian Gumbel in New York. The New Orleans Superdome, the Saints are out in front of the Patriots. Manning lateraling the Jack Holmes, who throws a touchdown pass to Jimmy Rogers. New Orleans has added a field goal. They're out in front, 10 to nothing. Let's go back to Dick Ember. Hi, right, Brian Gumbel. So New Orleans ahead early against New England. Cincinnati leading favored Cleveland. And Houston favored is trailing Minnesota at this point. Ball in Cincinnati's camp. Thompson complete. Dan Ross has blockers. And down he goes at the 41 of Cleveland. First down. Ross from Northeastern has 51 catches this year to lead the Bengals. The Achilles deal. The weakness of this Cleveland defense, the short passing game that's exploited by Thompson here across inside under the deep drop of the linebackers. Now watch, watch the slip right there. We told you about the slickness of that field. Ross trying to make the cut there, actually tackled himself. The defender merely fell on him. Isaac Curtis did a good job of cutting down a linebacker to give Ross some running room. If we see passes, they'll probably be to the sunny part of that field, Dick. The, the grass over there is pretty good. Or the turf over there is pretty good. He's got Curtis there. And now he's going long for Curtis. Almost intercepted by Ron Bolton in the end zone. Well, they had Curtis around it. He's had some big games against Cleveland. Well, and again, that's the kind of pass that uh, Jack Thompson will look at in the films and say, wow, should have kept my fingers on that one. You'll see it here. He'll, he'll give you a deep pumping right there. That's designed to freeze the defensive backs. Did not fool the defenders, however. You see Darden 27 and Bolton 28, both well in position there. Bolton almost, in fact, uh, getting his hands on it for a possible interception. Second down and 10 at the Cleveland 40 as the Raiders take the early lead against the Giants in the Meadowlands. 3-0 here in Cincinnati. Archie Griffin to the 37-yard line. Griffin has not been used all that much of late. The former Heisman winner, two-time Heisman out of Ohio State, has lost his starting role to LSU's Charlie Alexander, but Griffin playing today. Can be a very effective back on a slick field. Has excellent balance, low center of gravity. Runs kind of over his feet. That's something you, you lose. A lot of backs run laid out. You can't do that on a slick field like this. We might see quite a bit of Archie Griffin today. 
Cleosa Montgomery replacing Griffin is flanked to the right. Shotgun. And now Curtis and out of the shotgun, Thompson. Oops. Number 78. Munoz, Anthony Munoz, pulled too soon. And that'll cost NC5. Much of the pressure applied on passers by the Cleveland defense has come from Lyle Alcedo, number 77, who's a very emotional player and a bull. And I'm sure Munoz anticipating that kind of rush, just trying to get a little extra start. He's a rookie. He'll make a few of those mistakes, but he's a player. Meanwhile, down in the Astrodome, Houston has kicked a field goal. Tony Frisch from 23 yards. The Vikings, who had their extra point block, lead 6-3 first quarter. Third and a long 12. Thompson over the middle. Incomplete. Isaac Curtis well covered. Had he caught the ball, he wouldn't have picked up the first down anyway. Tom Darton on the coverage for Cleveland. And here comes Breach to punt. So far, the Browns playing with their back against their own goal line. They'd like to get a little breather here, get a little, little room to operate. Breach, who has not punted in the National Football League, he was the kicker with the Raiders, but never the punter. They had Raymond Guy, so this is a unique experience for him. We'll see if Cleveland goes after him. Nope. Gets a little soft kick down at the 20. Keith Wright at the 15. And that's all. Double cover. Pool number 35. Hit him out of bounds. <laughs> I think he's relieved. A little poocher punt. An excellent punt under the circumstances. Just exactly what you'd like to have. And had, uh, had Keith Wright let it go, they would have downed it inside the 10, I think. Now timeout, 540 left in this first quarter. Bengals three, Browns nothing. The new head coach of the Fighting Irish, Jerry Faust, a high school coach here, very successful at Moeller High School. His players are here, guests of the Bengal management. That's as close to being down for that Moeller team <laughs> as they got all year long. They were awesome. Of course, Moeller, a part of the history of another man who's here today, Paul Brown. Well, it's Paul Brown, Massillon, Ohio, was his school, and Moeller beat Massillon for the Ohio State Championship. And that's still a great rivalry. Indeed. First down, Cleveland at the 14. Mike Pruitt out to the 17. They to the 18. Bo Harris, 53 on the tackle for the Bengals. Second down and six. Ray Griffin comes into the defensive backfield for Cincinnati. And Greg Bright goes up. I think the biggest improvement in this Bengals team uh, this year certainly has to be the defense. Hank Bullock came in from New England. The assistant head coach there has become the defensive coordinator here. Has done an excellent job with this defensive team. Good point. They were last in the league in total defense last year. They're ninth this year. A big change. Tight under pressure gets it off to Pruitt. And he has a first down at the 26-yard line. 13 yards as LeCare and Cameron made the tackle for Cincinnati. Sipe again operating under pressure. Bengals putting a great deal of pressure on him. Number 79, Browner on the outside working on Doug Deacon, 73. He's around behind to get a piece of Sipe. Sipe had to throw a little early, but they did get the play away and get the first down. Four and a half minutes in the first quarter remain. Three nothing Cincinnati. Sipe is audibleizing. Thus far, he's completed three out of four. Total of eight yards. Nothing there at all as Leo Miller runs into a Bengal stone wall. In the first game between these two ga uh, teams, Dick, the Browns only ran the ball six times. But the reason for that, they were operating so successfully in the air. They could do what they wanted with the throwing game. It really hurts the secondary, especially the young safeties uh, for this Bengal team. But they're not having that kind of success in the air today, and they're trying to run the ball, not having much success there either. And they've gone to the four-man front on second and ten. Mike St. Clair, number 72, has joined Edwards, Whitley, and Browner. Oh! And he gets up and almost completes it anyway. At least he saved himself about a ten-yard loss. Stripe had the presence of mind to unload it. Well, again, comment earlier about the slick field. 
You can see them working pretty effectively out in that area where the sun is. Browner going inside, number 79, meets the stone wall there. But going back to pass, Sipe himself had slipped. Browner arrived in time to not Sipe rolling, but he did save the sack by getting that ball away. Defensive coach Marty Schottenheimer with the Browns on the sideline. Schottenheimer talking to his defensive coach, trying to keep them updated on what the Bengals are doing to them. Good defensive coach has done much for that uh, defense over in Cleveland. Bengals had 11 men on the line of scrimmage. Here they come. have added a few wrinkles to their defense. They're coming with the blitz. Bo Harris, 53, all over sight. They just didn't have enough people to pick it up. And Sight doing an excellent job of avoiding the sack there and avoiding an intentional grounding penalty. That's Cleosa Montgomery at the 36 of Cincinnati. Johnny Evans averaging 39 yards a kick, as you can see. Good boost. Montgomery back to the 31. And dropped at the 35-yard line. Good coverage by Cleveland. 319 remaining in the first quarter. 3-0 Cincinnati lead. A lot of us uh, were asked, Merlin and I, by the press, about our reaction to yesterday's experiment, the no-announcer experiment by NBC in Miami. And basically, the, my feeling was this. That it, it made me realize, Merlin, that we have a tremendous responsibility. We're a necessary element, and uh, we have to even work harder than we do. We worked pretty hard doing the game <laughs> from the hotel yesterday, Dick. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's exciting that we can be here. We, we hope we're good representatives for you in the booth and make the game a little more enjoyable for all of you at home. And, again, we wish you all a very pleasant of holidays from all of us at NBC Sports. 3-0 Cincinnati. Thompson complete. Out of bounds goes Steve Kreider from Lehigh University. Second year with Cincinnati, 12-yard game. That is his 15th catch of the year. Kreider actually a number three receiver early in the year. Don Bass had done most of the playing early until his injury. McAnally then replaced him, and now Kreider has replaced McAnally. Doing a good job getting control on that pattern, working the slick side of the field. And again, the offensive receiver, knowing where he's going to cut, will have the advantage in the slick part of his field. First down, Bengals at their own 46. They lead 3-0. Pete Johnson protecting that football. Gets it to the 49-yard line. Lyle Alzado. Several other white shirts there to bring him down. One of those white shirts belongs to number 52, Dick Bam Bam Ambrose. Excellent linebacker. Reads the play well. Watch him dip right into the hole. Meet the blocker in the hole. Booze knock. Stuff himself right into the legs of Pete Johnson. That's good linebacking play. And you see how many white shirts are a part of that tackle. You really have to swarm to a big back like that or he'll drag the whole stack. Second down and seven. Only Johnson behind Thompson. Complete to Ross. And he has a first down at the Cleveland 40 yard. if you weren't with us early for this telecast. The Cincinnati Bengals, although they will have a losing season, and this is the end of the year for them, they had the enthusiasm and the intensity yesterday in practice that you would expect of a team in first place at mid-year. Very often the last game of the season with a record like that, you'd expect the U-Haul uh, trailers and the kids and the wives parked outside the stadium and just let's get it over with and go home. Forrest Gregg has done an excellent job of getting his team ready for this game, and they're playing well. First down, Cleveland 40-yard line. Thompson. Incomplete, intended for Isaac Curtis. Some of the fans feeling that Ron Bolton, a little too aggressive on the sidelines, but no penalty. It'll be second and ten. No one likes to see an unnecessary shot. But for our defensive back, whose job and whose ability to make contact with re receivers has really been curtailed, his only chance once the receiver gets loose is to tackle him hard enough to shake the ball loose. Bolton obviously trying to do that, an indication of the kind of pressure that's been put on those defensive backs. Watch Bolton. He's not sure whether that ball is caught or not, 
comes up into the chest right there of Curtis. And still, I don't think, never lifted his head. Didn't know whether the ball was in Curtis's hand or not. Cincinnati has exercised a timeout as Jack Thompson comes to the sidelines. The plays are shuttled in from Coach Forrest Gregg, either by way of tight ends or running backs. And Thompson apparently just didn't feel he could work with the call. It's second down and 10. If you join us late, Cincinnati took the opening kickoff, helped by a couple of Cleveland penalties, got within field goal range, and Jim Breach kicked a 42-yard field goal. Pat McAnally, the punter and starting wide receiver for Cincinnati, injured seriously, was taken from the field on a stretcher. X-rays are being conducted now. It is a neck injury, and as soon as we receive an official report, of course, we'll pass it along to you. Got a good look at Jack Thompson. Calling the throwing Samoan. Handsome. Really a handsome young man. An interesting young man. Lots of confidence, lots of enthusiasm. And they're excited about his potential here at Cincinnati. You know what I liked about him, too, yesterday? He talked about Kenny Anderson, the veteran quarterback here in Cincinnati. And he said, I have so much to thank Kenny for, not just in helping me with the plays and reading defenses, but he's also been my ally off the field. When I give a speech, he helps me on that. Public relations, he gives me advice. Uh, it's nice to hear that two men competing for the same job can be such good friends. I think that's one of the ironies of the relationship of young players and older players in the NFL. Most older players willing and unselfish in the sharing of their knowledge and in the teaching of young players. Certainly in the case of Kenny Anderson, he's teaching a young man who might well replace him in the lineup. But Anderson uh, willing to do that, happy to do that. Let's run down the other scores while we have a moment. And this is the final week of the regular season. The Vikings, they've won the central of the NFC, leading at Houston in the second quarter, 6-3. That's Anthony Munoz there without the jersey, oh. apparently. Oh. Uh, they've asked him. They probably had something on his jersey. And that's a common complaint now for the, the defensive linemen who can't get their hands on the jerseys. Either that or the jerseys have been, have been altered so that pads are showing. There's a number of reasons to send a player to the sideline. That's what happened to Munoz. You saw New England has kicked a field goal. They trail New Orleans 10-3 at the end of the first quarter. Oakland leads the Giants 10-0 in the first quarter. Here it's 3-0 Cincinnati. Second down and 10. Good protection. Almost intercepted. The pass is right in the arms of Charlie Hall, a veteran from Houston. Charlie. Charlie looked up and had the ball in his hand and said, what, where'd that ball come from? And suddenly it dropped out of there. And I don't think he even saw it coming. Watch the shot here. He did see it. He did respond nicely to it. He just couldn't quite tuck it away. And that's one of the things that is difficult on a day like today. Most players on the field, many players, wearing gloves. And certainly hands are cold and fingers are cold. You don't have the feeling. And that ball changes physically. It's hard, just like a rock out there. Thompson is four out of ten. Passing for 40 yards. That's Curtis flanking right. Third down and 10. Thompson. To the 37 yard line, and he took quite a hit and is getting up slowly, if at all. Let's check on Thompson's condition on the far sidelines. He's still down. Now, that would be a blow. He's sitting up because Kenny Anderson, talking to him earlier, has a a very bad ankle and was concerned extremely concerned about his ability to to perform on this day they do have a number three quarterback there's Kenny Anderson you notice how quickly he was up to throw a couple of passes just in case his presence would be needed but it is fourth down right now they need a punter more than a pass Jim Breach who hit a soft punt and a good one under the conditions last time but when you think about the rest of this game and he's backed into his own end and needs a long kick Cincinnati's bound to suffer you have to question earlier are they going to come after him they didn't the first time they may have thought about it they may indeed come after him here no they didn't ball goes in the end zone and on the touchback Cleveland will play it from the 20 yard line 37 yard kick with 17 net and the Browns doing some uh, equipment repair of their own Marshall Harris the handsome young man from TCU a fine commercial artist, and that's how he made his living last year during the football year. Decided to come back when encouraged by the Browns as they picked him up for a number eight. <laughs> so he says the humor, too. All those defensive backs, defensive linemen, have really had to cinch those jerseys down 
so that they aren't as easy a target for the holding by the offensive lineman. That's a that's a rather new innovation in the NFL. Used to be exactly the opposite. It was the offensive line that did that. First down play for Sykes. Complete to Greg Pruitt, but Reggie Williams, playing with a painful elbow injury, makes the tackle at the 23. Reggie had ruptured a, a blood vessel in that elbow, and they said it was almost three times the size of a normal elbow. He's got a lot of padding on it there, but you see the, the size of it still. It's still one of the ugliest elbows I have ever seen, but he is anxious to be a part of this game. And uh, again, the, the indication from this Bengals team how important this game is to them. They didn't want to be on the sideline. Reggie wanted to be out there and be a part of it. Second down, seven. 23-yard line at Cleveland. They trail Cincinnati. 3-0. We're in the final seconds of the first quarter. Draw. Pruitt breaks the tackle and gains two. He would have lost three. Pruitt showing his power. Big Mike, who is ever so close to 1,000 yards. He started today with 983. Alzado has had hamstring problems the last three or four weeks. He's trying to keep that hamstring loose. Some of you at home watching the game might be wondering why would he run a draw play in that situation? But obviously he's trying to cut down on the rush. You run a draw play to try and limit the rush. Little fake right there. Wilson Whitley doing a good job blasting through there. And Pruitt saving himself quite a bit of yardage. An excellent back to be able to get that kind of yardage after he was in the back. Here. The end of the first quarter at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. And after the first 15 minutes, the Bengals lead the Browns 3-0. Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, Dick Henberg with Merlin Olsen. The Bengals dominant in that first quarter, and their defense especially impressive. And they've got Cleveland at third and five at the Cleveland 25 as we open the second quarter. Brian Seitz going long. Caught! Could go all the way. Logan at the 20. He's all the way to the 10 yard line, Dave Logan. <laughs> 65 yards. Safer Sug saved a touchdown. Logan having trouble getting up off the ground. There's a down to help him. That would be a severe blow to the Browns if he is injured. No way to tell what has happened to him. But what a what a an inspirational catch. Watch Logan work Louis Breeden on the sideline. Breeden has him well covered, but Logan waited until the last second, timing his jump perfectly, has excellent hands. Watch now how he waits. He'll cut inside right there, throws Hicks by him, and finally Schaefer Suggs that rolled on the ankle, and I believe it's the ankle that was hurt right there. You saw Suggs roll across the ankle right at the last second on the tackle. Longest play of the year, pass play for Cleveland, 65 yards. First and goal, bubble. And Cleveland had it, so did Cincinnati. It's Cincinnati. Reggie Williams had the ball. He fumbled. Cody Rison of Cleveland had the ball, and he lost it. And just like that, the Browns' chances of taking the lead are snuffed out by the fumble. Very interesting how often a turnaround of this kind can take place right after an emotional play. Watch Sight just loses the ball there just before he was hit by Browner. Now the ball is loose. The ball bounced away by Williams right there into the air. And for a second was controlled by the Browns. Ryzen lost it. It's dug out eventually at the bottom of the stack. Big, big turnaround for the Bengals. So after a 65-yard completion, Sight to Logan. Sight fumbles on the next play, and it's Cincinnati at its 24. Pete Johnson into a crowd at the 26-yard line. Second down and eight. Three-nothing the score. The Bengals lead early in the second quarter. Forrest Gregg, certainly one of the most vocal coaches in the NFL. Really a, a highly visible man to his players. Very vocal in his praise and his criticism of them. Trained, of course, by Lombardi, one of the great offensive linemen in the history of the NFL. I'll tell you, he could block you, too. I remember. <laughs> I've still got a couple of sore places on my legs where he whacked me. Oakland 
Leading the Giants 10-3. The Giants getting a field goal from Janello, a long one, 47 yards in the second quarter. Thompson complete. ML Harris, and he's to the 34-yard line. Very close to a first down. Good second effort by Harris. We'll see whether or not they allow that last lean. No, they do not. And it will be third and about a yard and a half. Harris, one of the players that came to Cincinnati with Forrest Gregg from the Toronto Argonauts, the team that Gregg coached last year up in the Canadian Football League. That play, by the way, came as a result of a little gamble by Robert L. Jackson, 56. He thought he could get across and knock it down. Al Zato trying to get in on Munoz. We've seen a couple of mistakes from the young rookie. He doesn't make a mistake here. Gives Al Zato all he can handle. A couple of bulls working on each other there. Third down and two, and time called by Cincinnati. That's the second timeout they've used in this first half because of the concern over the play call. And again, that's the young quarterback, and that's one of the dangers of a young quarterback. Sending plays from the sideline, he simply didn't know what to do, called timeout. Dick Enberg, Merlin Olson, Riverfront Stadium. What's impressed you big guys so far in this first half? I think the Cincinnati defense is the most impressive thing and the emotional level of the entire Cincinnati team. Part of that may be due to the injury to McAnally. I think sometimes an injury like that inspires you. No question, they certainly have had the emotional edge in the early going here. Cincinnati, after the fumble by Sipe, has the ball. Third down and a short two at the 33. Alexander breaking into the clear at the 50. He's to the 40 and out of bounds at the 36 and a penalty flag. Face pass against the Browns. And it's against Tom Darden. 32-yard run by Charles Alexander. Alexander, a first-round draft pick, that's the kind of running they thought he would be doing for them. Has not done much of it during this year. But here in the final game, certainly gave them the breakaway they would like to have week in and week out. And it's a 15-yard face mask all the way to the 20-yard line, the penalty. Number 27, defense, first stop. Just an explanation. It's at the option of the official, the discretion of the official. It can be a five-yard or 15-yard penalty. Alexander breaking loose in the eyes of the official. The mask was used flagrantly in the tackle. You see it right there. The head jerked around, and they gave them the maximum penalty on that foul. First down at the 20-yard line. Pete John, no, it's Alexander again. And he showed not his speed that time, but his power at 226 pounds. We understand that New England has scored. Let's get a report on that from Brian Gumbel in New York. All right, Dick, the New England Patriots have scored. This action coming in the second quarter with the Patriots trailing 10 to 3. Matt Cavanaugh from 40 yards away into the arms of Russ Francis. Touchdown with the point after the Pats have deadlocked it at 10. Dick? Thank you, Brian. The Bengals on second and five at the Cleveland 15-yard line. They lead 3-0 early in the second quarter. Alexander again. And he gets only a couple this time. Good, solid, low tackle by the Browns. Henry Bradley, number 91. Boy, to Alexander, he has not, as you mentioned, Merlin, given them the breakaway runs that they hoped he would, but he does show an interesting combination of power and speed at 226. One of the reasons that Archie Griffin has not seen much playing time is the decision by Forrest Gregg to go with the big back, Alexander and Johnson. And they certainly have rewarded uh, uh, his expectations in the last three games and certainly again here today. Third down. Thompson's going to have to hurry. The 32nd clock is at five, four, three, two. He just gets the play off. Play action. Big play, big points. They'll go now for the seventh. 
Jim Brink. Connects. Oh, the Browns had the ball first and goal at the Cincinnati 10. Fumble. The Bengals then take it all the way to the other end and score on this scramble by Thompson. When you get a pass play like this and people get spread all over the field, often the, the very easiest thing to do, if you have running ability, is to slip up the middle. Get away from the defensive lineman. With everyone else spread out, you've got a chance to go for that end line. Thompson does it here, and he's hungry. Watch him dive for that end zone. Right there. Just leaps in there. Fine, fine play. And the Cleveland Browns find themselves in the playoff pressure cooker now. They trail by 10 here in Cincinnati. Sutton Sam Reticliano is what they call him now in Cleveland. His teams have won suddenly, and after the miracle of Minnesota, they have also loved, lost in lightning-like manner. And they trail 10-0 as on that return of kickoff. Right is out of bounds at about the 34-yard line. ML Harris made the tackle. Didn't take Cincinnati long to go 76 yards, a little over three minutes, and credit Thompson with a 13-yard touchdown run. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. WKYC TV Cleveland, television home of the Browns. Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. The underdog Bengals looking for their fourth straight win. Lead favored Cleveland 10-0. The Browns looking for a playoff, and the Bengals have been tough. Wright throws it in the flat, incomplete. Mike threw it, thought he had caught it, ruled a trap. Bo Harris on the coverage. Pat McAnally, what a good picture that is. Hallelujah. McAnally is okay. He was carted off on a stretcher, and it looked to be a very serious injury in the first quarter. He's okay, and obviously at least will be available for punting duty. Well, and the important thing is that he's back. There'll be a lot of relieved feelings, a lot of emotional relief on that sideline. We talk about the concern of other players and coaches as, as well as fans. Back and alley, obviously, they were taking good care because they didn't want to take any risks. And I think that's important to know that there is that care being taken by the doctor. Right off play action. He's in trouble. Down he goes. Eddie Edwards made the tackle. That's the first sack of the day. But this Bengal defense has had pressure on sight all day long. He'll tell you, that's the second sack of the day, he'll tell you himself that the critical thing is the amount of time that he has to throw. And without that time, he becomes an ordinary quarterback. The Bengals are making him an ordinary quarterback in this game. And obviously, good coverage downfield as well, Merlin, because Sipe was looking for a secondary target. The other sack came on the fumble when Cincinnati recovered and went on to drive 76 yards for a touchdown. Third down and 15, and a whistle. Flag thrown downfield, apparently delay of game, yes. Sight surpassed the 32nd allotment, and a pained expression on Rotigliano's face. That's not the kind of mistake you'd expect of a team looking to a playoff spot in the last game of the regular year. One of the things that happened to this Cleveland team after a, a very emotional victory of, in Houston, I think they made the mistake of looking at the schedule and looking at the records of the teams they were going to play, and they said, hey, it's a coast from here. It has been nothing but <laughs> bloodbath since that time. They have had to fight every step of the way, even against the Jets, barely eking it out and losing it last week, and behind here, they've got their work cut out for them. Nine minutes, 42 seconds left in the half, tight. personal foul. Doug Beacon, one of the players involved in that hassle on the field, that looked like a retaliation situation. It'd be interesting to see what the call is going to be. It was after the play. Personal foul against the Bengals. And instead of Cincinnati getting the ball on a punt, Cleveland will keep it on the foul. Try and get a shot of it for you. Doug Deacon, the man who was involved, and it'll be over on the right. There you see number 73 working across at the bottom of your screen. You just see his feet there. Well, we didn't get to see it, but apparently 
Brock Browner, 79, retaliating for something that happened in the past. Right? Foul. Unnecessary roughness, number 75, defense, first down. They call 75. Automatic first down. That's the bad part of it, to give up that position. And again, that's maturity. That really is maturity. You see the reaction of Forrest Gregg there. Gregg, a Hall of Famer. Coach for three years, the Cleveland Browns, the team he's trying to beat today. First down, tight, complete, Rucker. Nice move by Rucker, and he darts out of bounds at the 47 with a first down. Bo Harris ran him out. Often to examine the play of a player that's been called for a penalty. Wilson Whitley on that particular play, given extra help, Tom Bidion, the man responded to trying to block him, but you see the shot right there from Henry Shepard who went right after his leg, keep him out of the play. I think he might have gotten a little shot on Shepard at the end there, too. First down, 11 yards on that tight pass as he approaches the 4,000-yard mark for the year. He'll be the Pro Bowl starter for the AFC. In the flat, Mike Pruitt. He is crunched at the 45-yard line, a loss of two. Bo Harris has been all over the field. Number 53, Jim LeClaire, 55, also in on the play. The play actually made, though, as much as anything by number 75, Wilson Whitley. Pumped up by that penalty. Watch him. He's going to get up off the ground here quickly to the outside. He's going to force the screen play back inside where he's got help. And by doing that, you get the pursuit from the inside. The tackle definitely made by the two inside linebackers, but made possible by a fine play by the nose man, Wilson Whitley. Call it second and 11. 10-0, Cincinnati leads. On a blitz, complete. Rucker at the 44-yard line. Lewis Street made the tackle. And that is going to be shy of a first down. Eight yards on the play. Other scores in the National Football League. Minnesota leading Houston 13 to 3. But if Houston loses and Cleveland loses, Houston wins the AFC. Oakland, sizable lead at New York. 17 3 for the Raiders. Jim Plunkett has just hit Cliff Branch with a 31 yard play. Here it's 10 to nothing. Cincinnati, a big third down play for Sy and the Browns at the Bengal 45. Mike Pruitt. Trying to be close. Well, it'll be awfully close. Looked like he wasn't going to make it until he got that last third. He's a, he's a powerful back. It is a first down. Rod Horn and Bo Harris made the tackle on Mike Pruitt. Number one draft pick out of Purdue. And 1976, and he really has matured. Last year, had a big year. Pro Bowler gained nearly 1,300 yards, and he's going to be over 1,000 as of today.
Packers, and he actually finished uh, his career one year with the Dallas Cowboys. 42-yard scoring play for the Cleveland Browns, and Rucker caught three passes in that drive, so they're working on somebody in that Bengal defense. 10 to 7 the score. Cockroft to kick it off. It's very short, but high. 16-yard line, Montgomery. 20, 25, and down right where his number is, 28 yard line. We understand New England has taken the lead, 17 to 10. Three minutes left in the first half as Kavanaugh to Johnson, 11-yard touchdown. So New Orleans' early 10-0 lead has melted quickly down in the Superdome. I doubt if Cleveland is really expecting much help down there. They've got to do it themselves. I'm sure that's their attitude, and they're doing something about it right now. Now it's the Browns defense trying to get the ball back. Curtis in motion. Thompson to Alexander. Gain of a yard at best. Charlie Hall and Marshall Harris along with Henry Bradley. A lot of coaches will tell you, Dick, the game is won or lost on the line of scrimmage. The 91 Bradley, the nose man, working on Blair Bush, a good center. Bush gets him shielded out, but Bradley still gets around behind, scrambles, pursues nicely, and eventually does get a piece of Alexander on the tackle. However, you've got to be awfully quick to run around that center and get it to the back side. With more experience, they'll learn to slow down the line. Second down and nine. A little reverse to ML Harris. And very well by the Browns. No game. Clarence Scott and Robert Jackson collaborated on the tackle. And Harris slow getting up. And the 13,000 Brown fans here in this stadium certainly making themselves heard. I think they're cheering as loudly for their Browns as these uh, Cincinnati Bengal fans are for their team. Timeout, injury timeout as they attend to M.L. Harris. We have five minutes and 54 seconds remaining in the first half here in Cincinnati. The Bengals with a field goal, then a touchdown, but the Browns have scored and trailed. Well, the Pruitts have played well. They have 105 catches between them, and of course, Mike leads in rushing. And Cleveland fans, their support, well in evidence. Somewhere between 10, 13,000 fans from Cleveland down here to cheer for the Browns. And they even needed an extra bus to charter down the media covering this game from Cleveland. Third and nine, Cincinnati at the 29. Thompson to Curtis, incomplete. Now the Browns will get the ball back. And there has been a definite swing in momentum towards Cleveland here in the last six minutes. Pat McAnally comes in to kick and gets a standing ovation. And McAnally just glad to be standing. He's very happy to be back on the field. We're happy to see him out there. Needs to return. Keith Wright at the 35-yard line. pressure concentrates on getting that ball off it looked like Curtis Weathers might have been one no, 21 that's uh, Oliver Davis the man that was bounced across into him McAnally as all good punters do will accentuate the action a little bit you see the smile on his face most importantly his team has a football has excellent position and a chance to get some more points on the board oh Cincinnati Instead of giving up the ball, gets the five-yard penalty, automatic first down at the 34. For the Browns, as much as they've tried to forget what happened to them in Minnesota last week, it's been a haunting four or five days to try to erase what happened as the Vikings pulled out that miracle win. Thompson, wide open as a rock. 
first down at the 45 yard line. Ambrose made the tackle. 11 yards for Ross. We he talked is a about. Excuse me, well liked uh, young man on this. In fact, finished second to Jim LeClaire for the Most Valuable Player Award voted by the players themselves. Really did. And, and certainly uh, someone who had gone rather unsung uh, in, on the national scene during the year. Uh, not the greatest speed in the world, but very dependable. Again, we, we see the vulnerability of that Cleveland pass defense to those short passes. Uh, linebackers getting deep drops, but unable to come up quickly and protect that short zone. First down screen to Alexander. And he's to midfield, a gain of five. Good play by Ambrose, Alzado, and Clay Matthews. It appeared that Alexander might get a much longer gain. Alexander working the sideline over there, but talking to the talking to the Bengal offensive players and asking them about the Cleveland defense. I asked them what the strength of that defense was. They said in the linebackers the linebackers, which is strange because it's in the short passing game that they've been beaten. But that's because of the design of the defense. And I'm sure that's to protect defensive backs. Second and five, Thompson. Incomplete. Curtis, well covered by Scott and Bolton in the Cleveland defense. It'll be third and five. We talked to Jack Thompson yesterday, Dick, about his abilities, developing his abilities as quarterback one of the things he talked about that was really critical was the ability to read the defenses and how no matter how much you practice no matter how many people talk to you about it until you actually have a chance to do it it is extremely difficult and even then you need a lot of experience to make it happen he's really had trouble hooking up with Curtis he's tried four or five times and they really haven't been close to completing one from the 50 yard line third and five he's in trouble Intercepted by Henry Bradley. And no flag. It took a lot of speed for Thompson to elude the sack. Thompson under pressure. Gets the blitz right there. Two defensive backs coming. Burrell and Justin Flint, 20. And they're all over him. He got outside. I'm surprised he didn't get a flag for illegally grounding that one. But maybe the officials felt that a near interception was punishment enough. Right and Hall are deep for Cleveland. McAnally will deliver from about his 40. I don't think they'll try and block this one, Beck. Nope. High, fairly short kick. Right at the 18, 20. And down at the 29, and a flag is down. Three minutes and 43 seconds remaining. The flag is down at the line of scrimmage, so we suspect that is against Cincinnati. Yes. The illegal man downfield. As you know, the, only the two outside men are allowed down the field as the ball is snapped. The others must wait till the ball is kicked. Apparently Cleveland will decline the penalty. They are, and will take it at the 29-yard line. Ryan Seip guided his team to a touchdown. 66-yard drive the last time. There's the penalty totals. And some of those Browns penalties figuring in the two Cincinnati scores. Well, a big opportunity there that they could not capitalize on if they got the ball back. Now let's see what Seip and his offense can do with it. Newsom in motion. Seip to throw. Newsom complete. Flag down. As Newsom is hit at the 35-yard line. Holding Cleveland. Now another penalty that is making it tough for themselves. Cleveland Browns. Now we talked about cardiac kids. <laughs> they don't know how to do it the easy way, do they? All season long, and last year as well, Cleveland taking the game down to the final minutes, and the thought was it'll probably be the same today. Holding number 43, offense, first down. 
Berlin, 11 of Cleveland's 15 games this year have been decided by a touchdown or less, and six games by a field goal or less. Uh, I think it's not only the closeness of the games, but it's the fact that those were touchdowns and field goals in the last seconds often that made the decision uh, possible one way or the other. That's right. Draw play. And it was read very well by 55, Jim LeClaire, and also 72, Mike St. Clair. Mike Pruitt is an excellent draw running back. And the qualities for that quick start, the ability to pick the open territory, but on that play, uh, very alert defense all across the line. There was no open territory, but again, you run the draw play to slow the pass rush down, and Sipe needs time, so he's trying to slow it down a bit, give himself a little room. Mike Pruitt now has only 10 yards rushing today. That gives him 993 for the year. Fly down, incomplete. 72 St. Clair was putting the heat on site and the yellow flag is down it's against Cleveland all Bengals right might decline this one well right now they're certainly marching the wrong direction as they want to go out to this goal line they're going back toward their own goal line certainly embarrassing I'm sure for an extreme illegal offense. use of the hands number 63 offense Decline. Cody Risen working on 73. Eddie Edwards. Edwards, uh, a good, fine, strong young defensive end coming from the outside. Risen, one of the most physical uh, in appearance uh, offensive tackles in the league. Huge long arms, and I think he, his arms got a little too long on that one. <laughs> Third down, call it 19. Brown trail, 10-7. Less than three minutes remaining in the first half. Oh, great work by Sykes. And it's complete at the 45-yard line. What a play by Brian Sykes. He hits Willis Adams. Sykes is not a terribly quick-footed quarterback, but he does have excellent vision. Watch the way he finds the open territory here, sliding laterally, feeling the blocking, and then getting the pass away. Willis Adams has not played a great deal, but shows great concentration. He's in there for David Logan. You saw Logan hurt his ankle earlier, and he did a great job of pulling that in 25 yards on the pass. So on third and 19, Sipes gets the first down. Now he deals it to Mike Pruitt, breaks a tackle, and he's out of bounds at the Cincinnati 47. Bo Harris and Ray Griffin made the tackle. That stops the clock with 2.03 left in the half. So Cleveland with plenty of time to take its first lead of the game. I'd like to pass along congratulations to Brian Seip and his wife, Jerry, as you see some Cody Rison blocking, holding, pushing, whatever you call that on St. Clair. St. Clair, the fourth uh, defensive, uh, the fourth defensive lineman that goes into that situation and he obviously uh, giving uh, Ryzen a little more than he wanted on that one. Rucker in motion. Mike Pruitt to the 45. Might be sort of the first down. I'd like to complete that thought on Brian Sipe and his wife Jerry welcome their second daughter to this world on Wednesday afternoon. So it's been a very important week for Mr. Sipe and the family. They named her Morgan Lynn. Uh, a nice name. They're obviously excited and talking to some of the Browns. They were concerned. They said his priorities are with his wife. We, we hope she has the baby before the game. That's <laughs> certainly cooperative. 10-7 yeah. the score. Less than two minutes remaining in this first half. Lyle Alzado, Clay Matthews, you wonder what their thoughts are. A long, long year may or may not come to an end for Cleveland today. Cincinnati knows they go home and the young Bengals looking for next year already. Would like to win four in a row to finish this season. It's third and one at the 45 of the Bengals. Play action. Miller, a 
juggling catch and a first down at the 38-yard line. Cleo Miller bobbled and then embraced it for a first down. They'll come right back with a quick play. We've got a man down on the field, one of the Cincinnati Bengals on the field. Cleo Miller just bouncing that ball around. Gets himself inside. 57 Reggie Williams over there to do a, a good job of controlling him. Jim LeClaire is the injured Bengal. They're attending to him. Ryan Sipe is now three yards away from 4,000 yards this season. More importantly, he's trying to get some points and the lead. Preceding announcement furnished as a public service by the National Football League. And there's another good sign. Dave Logan is okay and back in the lineup for the Cleveland Browns. So two men, McAnally and Logan, wide receivers, injured, left the field, both have returned. First down, Cleveland at the Cincinnati 38. Calvin Hill in the game for the first time for the Browns. Oh, my! Ross Browner, mother sight at the 49. Sipe, who has been sacked only 17 times all year, down four times in this first half. Tony, not going to be rising, but Doug Deacon, 73, the man responsible. And Browner just took a hard inside rush, flew off the ball. He was unable to control him. And that, that 16, 17 sack, by the way, number one in the NFL. Yes. They're liable to drop out of that position if they don't get busy. Clock running, 109 left in the half. Complete the hill. And he's to the 40-yard line. Brings up third down and 12. Cleveland has not called a timeout yet. 59, 58 seconds. Glenn Cameron, Reggie Williams made the last tackle. A very patient call by Sipe. They finally taking a timeout here, but a patient call by Sipe. He didn't try and get all the yardage. He's got half of it. Knows he's got at least one chance, maybe two, to take the rest of it. And with his catch by Calvin Hill, the veteran, former Dallas Cowboy, Brian Sipe, is over the 4,000-yard mark. But they wasted 10 seconds before they called that timeout. A bit of a surprise, although one thing you have to be thinking of, and they are thinking of, obviously, if they do score, they don't want to leave much time on that clock. And there's a battle. You always you want to have time to score, but you don't want to leave any time for the opposition to work that clock. And with third down and 12, should they throw a pass incomplete, the Bengals will possibly have some time at the end of this half. It's 10 to 7 Cincinnati. In case you join us late on the opening drive of the game, Jim Breach of the Bengals kicked a 42-yard field goal early in the second quarter. A 13-yard scramble by quarterback Jack Thompson culminated a 76-yard drive as Cincinnati led 10-0. But Brian Seitz to Reggie Rucker, 42 yards later in this quarter, has pulled the Browns within three at 10-7. And Brian Seitz now faces third and call it 12 from the 40. And it is getting colder in Cincinnati. Now once that sun has left the playing field and no place to get in the sun to get warm no place to get warm at all down there tight almost caught by logan he is one of the best in the business at timing that leap using his body to ward off the defender and almost pulled it off again as he went over ray griffin he did that earlier on a very big catch he also does something else here. Griffin is actually in position to try an interception. And going over the top as he did and almost feeling that ball, of course, kept it away from Griffin. And you see the result there. Neither one of them got it, but certainly you don't give it away to the defense. They'll put it out. 46 seconds left. Although they certainly have been known to do something else besides punt in a situation like this. Johnny Evans, number eight, is a quarterback, a backup quarterback. Twice in games we've seen recently, he's come up to run a play. And the Bengals don't even have a man back. So he just hits a little soft kick down to the 15. Oh, that's a free ball! It's a free ball! Cleveland has it at the nine-yard line. It hit one of the Bengals in the leg, Reggie Williams, and Cleveland has recovered. First and goal at the nine-yard line. And that's the kind of mistake that just killed Cincinnati all during the early part of this season. That's one of the dangers of getting back 
in a situation where no one had gone back to receive the punt would have been wise to keep all of the Bengals out of that territory. Now watch the bouncing ball here. It's going to glance off the leg of number 57 Williams right there. The ball came down, didn't even see it. And there you've got Dino Hall, 50, 26. He finally gets on that football. They've got a chance to get this score and go ahead. What a tremendous break for, for the Cleveland Browns. 34 seconds left in the half from the nine. Tight. Incomplete. Intended for Ozzie Newsom, number 82, covered by Lewis Breeden. 29 seconds left. Easily the most critical series of the first half. If they can hold them here, keep them at least to a three-pointer, or maybe keep them away from the goal line at all, they certainly will gain part of the edge they appeared to lose a little earlier in this third or in this second quarter, Dick. Cleveland has two timeouts left as Sam Ritigliano thinking not about this play, but two plays ahead. Second and goal at the nine-yard line. Rucker right, Logan left. Type to Logan, incomplete, and no flat. Good coverage by veteran Ken Riley, a 12-year veteran from Florida A&M, the dean of the Bengals. And it's a game of timing. This ball thrown before the cut. Riley having to time his hit so that he gets there at the same time as the bounce of the ball. A better look at the action on the outside. Now watch the hit. Does he hit him before the ball arrives? Well, huh, maybe. Maybe not. The official said no. And Logan did not react angrily. So I think probably a good call. Type has called timeout. Has one more timeout left. 24 seconds remaining in a first pass at has had a little bit of everything and it is being played at a at a level that really gets these teams or at least Cleveland ready for the playoffs should they make it it has that sort of drama and tension in the air and that's to the credit of these uh, Cincinnati Bengals because they are playing as if this is their playoff opportunity Reggie Williams the man who was down on that punt all bounced off his leg a tough play for him that ball came down uh, short he had no way of seeing it. You see him there saying, hey, I didn't even see the darn thing. And obviously, uh, trying to get the defensive team, the, the Bengals fired up, if they could possibly turn it around here, take the football away, or, as I said, even hold the three points here would be a big victory for them. Cleveland Browns fans, they've had a good time down here in Cincinnati this weekend, and offering their vocal support. This will be the largest crowd of the year for Cincinnati. The other sellout against Pittsburgh was when the baseball configuration was still in effect. So there are about four or five thousand extra seats today. From the nine yard line, trailing ten to seven. Calvin Hill didn't quite look in time. It appeared he was going to break in the clear. And was a little late looking back. Jim LeClair and Lewis Breeden were there for Cincinnati. So a the Bengals do hold. They're blitzing on him again. Linebacker coming from the outside. Stepped up. I think he threw a little before he was ready to throw. Calvin getting a look at that football. But it was just a little overthrown. I, one of the things that happens. You're running timing patterns. You're cold. You're not running as fast on a day like today. And it's difficult to time things out perfectly. Don Cockroft. 26 and a half yards away from tying it. It's good. So that muff punt by the Bengals leads to a three point cock raw field goal. And a game is <laughs> the cardiac kids have gained in even first half with 14 seconds left before the intermission. Paul McDonald, the holder, did an excellent job of pulling a rather high snap down for Cockcroft, and I'm sure, uh, again, the importance of a good snap, good hold, and a good kick. Watch, watch McDonald, who's a backup quarterback. Snap a little high, a little inside, gets it down with good concentration. The timing of the play, excellent. Cockcroft followed through. By the way, the American-style kicker does have an advantage on a slick field. Doesn't put the pressure on that planting foot 
that a European or soccer style kicker will put on the planning foot. Often they lose their footing more easily than a straight ahead kicker. Everybody having a good time today in Cincinnati. 10 10 the score. 14 seconds left. And Cockroft to kick it off. See whether or not he hits one of those halfway in between kicks, uh, fearful perhaps of a long return. One of the interesting things that happens on the kickoff for Cleveland, they'll run a couple of players behind the kicker. And they do that to overload one side or the other. The reason they're the thinking there is that Cockroft's kickoffs are not long. They're not into the end zone. But he is accurate. He'll choose one side or the other to kick to. And you'll see them overload and try and get to that side. Bengals are playing up very close, looking for a possible onside kick. And it's straight away. And Montgomery back at his own nine. 20. And he's to the 25-yard line with seven seconds left in the half. 16-yard return. Ricky Feature. Donald Oden in on the tackle for Cleveland. Got to believe that maybe for us, Greg, uh, well, he has two choices. He either uh, accepts the tie and walks it in, or he goes with uh, one of the miracle-type plays and uh, hopes for a, a penalty, possibly uh, a big catch down the sideline, but with seven seconds, that's not that practical. No, well, he's just going to walk it out. And, of course, there's so many important games. AFC with seven teams, all with a chance for the playoffs, but no one clinching it coming into this final week. And Brian Gumbel will bring you up to date on all the scores, the standings, the implications. At halftime, both the Bengals and the Browns fans cheer their teams off the field. At the intermission, the Cleveland Browns 10 and the Cincinnati Bengals 10. Here's another Radio Shack Christmas gift idea. Soft, cuddly animals with a surprise inside. Riverfront Stadium. Temperature in the teens. Cold, perhaps, for some, but the action was heated. The Browns fell behind 10-0 and have rallied to tie at the intermission. Now let's go to the Browns. Fumbled. Will it be ruled a fumble? Jojo Heath came up with a football for Cincinnati, but they say Hall was down at the time of the bobble. 39-yard return by one of the smallest big men in the league, Dino Hall. Little Dino has taken over that responsibility from Keith Wright, who was injured earlier in the year, breaks outside. Obviously, the return up the left side, he just got out on his own, runs through one tackle there, a second tackle, gets off in there, finally a Fine stop there. Jim Breach made the Breach. tackle. <laughs> you wouldn't expect Jim Breach to be over there to make that tackle. And being helped off the field, number 59, Andrew Mellentree, the rookie linebacker for the Bengals. Boy, that field is so hard, Merlin. When we walked on it yesterday, it's like playing on a sidewalk. Well, and even the area of the field that had softened up a little bit in the sun, now with the shade and the temperature dropping, will become harder. Again, the ball difficult to handle on a day like today. We're going to see the ball bounce around a few more times, and the body is not as pliable either. I think that's why we're having so many injuries in this game. Now the Browns open up first play of the second half at the Cincinnati 47. Mike Pruitt run out of bounds at the 50-yard line. A loss as Ross Browner, the former Notre Dame All-American and Outland Trophy winner, makes another big defensive play. Browner, of course, uh, one of the responsible parties for the pressure put on Sipe in that first half. Four big sacks on Sipe in the first half, and numerous other times he was pressured. Obviously, uh, showing his speed as he got to the outside, one of his great assets, the ability to run with those uh, receivers and get out there and do some damage, kept Pruitt from turning it up. New England has scored in the third quarter. Cavanaugh to Andy Johnson. That's the second time they've hooked up for a touchdown. And the Patriots now lead by 11. Second down, 12. Sipe. Whoa. Intercepted. That's going to be a touchdown for Ray Griffin. Look at the bench is emptying. The Bengal bench is trying to smother Griffin. Do you think they don't want this game?
defenseman of the year. They'd run Audie Newsom over, brought him across to try and give him some room on the outside. Sipes does not throw the ball well. Throws it behind Calvin Hill, the intended receiver, and Griffin just opens it up down the sideline. Whistle before the snap. Ironically, Griffin, as you see him scoring 54 yards in the touchdown, he has two interceptions this year, as you said, Merlin, both for touchdowns. Pretty good percentage, not bad percentage at all. And you talk about the emotional reaction to those kind of plays. Boy, that'll just turn things around. A big, big kickoff return by Dino Hall. It looked like uh, Cleveland had something going. And wham, it all back, it's all back in the laps now of the Cincinnati Bengals. Only the 13th time all year that Sipe has been intercepted. Five-yard penalty against Cincinnati. Reaches try for point. He is good. So on the second play of this second half, Ray Griffin, Archie's younger brother, goes now officially 52 yards for the touchdown on the interception, and the Bengals are in front 17 to 10. Ray Griffin has stunned the Cleveland crowd and Cleveland sidelines with a 52-yard interception for a touchdown. Dino Hall and Keith Wright are deep as Breach with the Bengals leading 17-10. It's a short one taken by Cleo Miller. He's to the 30 and out to about the 32-yard line. Miller taking it right out of Hall's hand, and the Browns will try it again. 34 seconds expired in this second half, and Griffin's interception giving Cincinnati the lead. Ritigliano. The fifth head coach in Cleveland Browns 35 years in the National Football League. Bert Paul Brown, the owner of the Cincinnati Bengals, was the first. And after whom the team was named. Newsom. Sight to Newsom. It looked to me, Merlin, that Sight might have gone right back to almost the same play, except it was Calvin Hill who was in the flat on the interception. He had Newsom on that side. When he ran up or when he threw the pass over there to Hill, Newsom had come across in motion and gone upfield. You talked about Paul Brown. <laughs> well, hiding behind the pole is uh, the former coach. You see him backing away a little bit there. Obviously, very intense. He watches uh, his team perform against his ex team. Quite a man, a Hall of Famer. One of the storied names in this grand game. Pruitt and Hill, the setback, split behind Sipe. Down the middle, complete. Ozzie Newsom at the 45-yard line. It'll be a first down for Cleveland. A tackle made by Lewis Breeden. We pause briefly from Cincinnati for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. With Merlin Olson, Dick Enberg at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio, where the underdog Bengals looking for their fourth straight win lead Cleveland 17 to 10. The Browns, a victory gets them into the playoffs. But they've been behind most of this game. They rallied to tie in the final seconds of the first half. Sight to Newsom, complete again, a five yard gain out to the 50. And a flag is down, and Sight may have been hit late. Yes. Roughing the passer against Cincinnati. Ross Browner arguing his case. He's not going to get much sympathy from the official or from Brian Seif for that matter. Now, 15 big yards against the Bengals all the way to the 35. Dick, what? we'll let the official make the call. Roughing the passer, a blow to the head, number 79 defense. First down. You see Sipe get the ball away. Brown are there. Now, difficult to tell what the officials saw. They're very hard now on any defensive lineman going to the head or the arm of the quarterback. We could not see from our angle. It's possible that that's what happened. It certainly didn't look like it was close enough to be a difficult call otherwise. You can see also why Browner argued his point. Yes, you can. Sipe for Pruitt. And the ball was short. Greg Pruitt was clear as Bo Harris on that deep swing was making.
making the play defensively, but the ball dies short of Brooks. Check one of the one of the things that happens to a team when they get a big break like Cincinnati got right the first of this of this half. Sometimes they come out, they're all fired out, they're ready to play, and then they get at a big emotional break like that, and it has almost the opposite effect of what you'd like it to have because it's, it's such a good thing that you, you kind of relax, and it's very difficult then to get back up. We'll keep an eye on the Bengals to see if that is what has happened to them in this game, or to see if it does happen to them in this game. Don Cockroft keeping himself limber on the sidelines. The Browns kicker is second down and 10 from the 35, and Seip is going long. For Rucker, touchdown! No, oh, it's Ricky Feature. Ricky Feature. And the Browns come right back. As Feature, the 5'10 receiver from Mississippi Valley, beats Breeden down that right sideline. Brian Seitz taking all the time he could get, sliding to the outside on that play. And again, if you give him the time to throw the football, you're just asking for trouble. He reads the defense as well, and he finds the open receiver, and he delivers the ball to him. Cockroft trying to tie it up. And we're even again. Playing two minutes and 39 seconds of this second half, we have two touchdowns already. And here's that explosive play. Watch Sipe now drifting outside. He gets away from the rush, and they talk about him lacking arm strength. He certainly got enough power on that ball, and you couldn't have thrown it any more perfectly. Seventeen, seventeen. as Sipe hits feature, the second touchdown pass for Brian Sipe. And Cockroft kicks it off. At the nine. It's Nathan Poole to the 20. And still on his feet, finally out of bounds around the 30-yard line. Ryan Sipe has hit Logan 65 yards, Rucker 42, Adams 45, Feature 35. So Sipe has hit some big ones today for Sam Rotigliano. They call him the cardiac pig. Rotigliano has a body that's 48, but his heart, he says, is 148. It's been tough these last two years, and he's really maintained tremendous pool himself, I think. He is really, when everyone else has been overly excited, he's always downplayed the emotion. The first play of the second half for the Cincinnati offense, no gain, and look at the Browns. They're playing the way the Bengals did the first half. Uh, it might be that the thing I just talked about a moment ago is taking place, that, that that big break took some of the emotional steam out of the Bengals, who had had such an emotional first half and who obviously came out ready to play. The Browns, on the other hand, that renewed their enthusiasm and determination. They came right back. Now their defense, very emotional out on the field. Second and ten. Play action. Intercepted by Bolton, and he's tackled by Ross. The 41 yard line, the Browns have the ball. And the Browns fans cheer the interception by Bolton. And you almost have to wonder which stadium we're in. They really are making their share of noise. Jack Thompson, a young quarterback, has a receiver who's covered and gets the ball over his head right into the end of the waiting Ron Bolton. Not a good pass. A pass that either should have been thrown short or not at all. The sixth interception this year by Bolton. He leads the Browns. Dipe right back to the air. Into the flat to Mike Pruitt. And his momentum carries him out of bounds. At the 42, a loss of a yard. I think one of the things we ought to talk about, Brian Sipe lacks so many of the standard qualifications for the quote-unquote perfect quarterback. Does not have the physical stature, does not have the arm strength, 
does not have the height uh, as well as the physical uh, strength that many of the scouts are looking for. But he does possess one very special thing. The school and the ability to see what is happening in front of him and take advantage of it. He really sees more and responds more accurately than just about any quarterback in all of football. Well, he's compensated in part for the physique with a great mind. Sight complete. Rucker out at the 30-yard line. That'll be a first down. 12 yards. Sight to Richie Rucker. Ken Riley made the tackle for Cincinnati. 17-17 tie. The second half exploding with a Griffin interception for a touchdown. Sight coming right back to hit Ricky Feaster, 35 yards. Then the quick interception by Bolton. Under pressure, and Sight goes down. 73, Eddie Edwards got him from behind. Ross Browner was there, too. The fifth time that Sipe has been sacked today. Again, here's a man protected better than anyone in the league all season. Only 17 times was he sacked. And the Bengals have gotten to him five times. Bengals' defensive line, obviously, doing a good job. And perhaps a few breakdowns. An interesting thing, three of those Cleveland offensive linemen just announced uh, and started in the Pro Bowl can't help but feel that maybe uh, a little letdown from a couple of them. They, hey, I'm a great player. <laughs> well, they got a little more work left to do. That young Bengal line has been tough. It's second and 14. Going long. Touchdown, Feaster. Ricky Feaster, two touchdowns in two minutes. He'll let somebody else spike it. on the football, took it all the way up. Browns are in the lead by seven. We've played a bit more than five minutes of this third quarter, and we've had three touchdowns. Cleveland leads, and here's a swimmer, and the Bengals don't even run it, taking no chances at all as Arthur Modell, the owner of the Cleveland Browns, watches with intense interest not only the pride of championships or playoffs but the financial matters also associated with a victory today i can't help but remember uh, another view of arthur modell last week as they were watching the closing minutes of that game against the minnesota vikings and he, he watched on with disbelief as his team up uh, what looked like a sure victory a certain victory thompson on a bootleg down at the 31 yard line by Dick Ambrose. That'll be registered as a sack, the first today by the Cleveland Browns. Thompson trying to get some extra time by rolling away from the pressure, but Bam Bam Ambrose turned it on. I didn't know he was that fast. He flew out there. Nice play. That's only the third scrimmage play for the Bengals offense in this quarter. 
McAnally back in the game after what appeared to be a serious injury in the first quarter. He's to the right. Curtis to the left. Fake draw, then a screen. And drop for a loss as Archie Griffin. A flag is down, and we're going to have a penalty, I believe, against Cleveland for roughing the passer. I think you're right, Dick. Yes, it is going to be that. And that's across the air. They've got about a seven, eight yard loss. Uh, big play by the defense. And it's just a mistake in judgment by a young defensive lineman. It's going to cost him that big play. Marshall Harris, after the pass is thrown by side, you see Robert Jackson involved in a little verbal challenge. Fifteen yards, Jerry Mark, right, the referee, all the way out to the 47-yard line. Personal foul. Roughing the passer, number 90, defense, first down. Now the Cincinnati Bengals, by the way, they're going to change their helmet design next year. Both the Browns and the Bengals, their helmets very much alike, same color. Next year, you're going to see those Bengal stripes. They say it is almost a psychedelic effect. Wild gear to be worn by the Bengals next season. Pete Johnson to the 50-yard line. Johnson has carried the ball often early in the game, but has been quiet since the first quarter. Henry Bradley made the tackle. Trying to get right up into the middle of that uh, defense with their big tank, Pete Johnson. But, oh, that Cleveland defense is fired up. They're, they're really emotional out there. Second down and seven at midfield. McAnally left, Curtis right, tight end, Ross on the right side. Play action. Thompson. Complete. McAnally, a fine catch. He used his body the way Logan does for the Browns. Clinton Burrell, the defender for Cleveland. Said earlier, we're very pleased not only to see McAnally back coming, but now back on the field. Certainly must be feeling much better after that real shot he took earlier. Thompson waiting until the last possible second. Gets the ball right on target. Fine pass, excellent catch. Good first down, Ed Ryder. At the 39 of the Browns, Bengals down by seven. Over the middle, it's intercepted and dropped. And in disbelief, Ambrose will go back to his defensive huddle. Ro right in his arms, but you see with all the heavy padding, the heavy gloves, those linebackers are geared for the interception. Some of those linebackers have frying pans for hands. So I think Ambrose is going to curse his hands all week. Although he did get a grab. Alexander grabbed him right on the elbow. Might have had some impact on the way that ball was dropped. Watch just on the left side of your screen. The intended receiver reach over and grab his elbow. You're right. I think it may have stripped that ball away. Thompson now 8 for 18. Looks at second and 10. To McAnally, incomplete, and almost into the arms of Darden, playing behind the intended receiver. I think uh, Kenny Anderson, quarterback who has started so many games here and who's been the mentor to young Mr. Thompson, would be looking out there and saying, <coughs> no, <laughs> please do not throw that one. Third and 10. Morris Gregg following Back-to-back -back four and 12 seasons here in Cincinnati. He's assured the Bengals of a better record this year. And they've beaten Pittsburgh twice. They shut out Minnesota. They've won their last three in a row and looking for their seventh win today. A triple left formation. On third and 10, Thompson in trouble. Throws incomplete to McAnally. And since this is the Bengals' last game of the year, McAnally may need about six months to recover from this one. Certainly might. Again, Thompson under pressure. Stunt run in there. Elvis Franks, 94. at 77. Lyle Alzado getting there at the last second. McAnally stretching back. Autry Beeman, 24, the man going in to try and make the tackle. Again, not knowing whether McAnally had that ball or not. Well, McAnally saved an interception by reaching back. That ball was headed right into the arms of the Browns. 
McAnally, of course, did not kick in the first half. Breach was the punter because of his injury, McAnally. Little soft kick toward the one-yard line. Caught and down. You can do that as long as there's no Brown trying to catch the ball. That is legal. JoJo Heath. Make it Greg Bright making the play. Greg Bright caught the ball for Cincinnati. So from the six-yard line, the Browns have it leading by a touch. There are many advantages to having this guy as your partner. Not only is he the best analyst in football, he's one of the biggest, and boy, do you throw up good body heat. <laughs> <laughs> I really need it oh, today. I need it today. I need it today, Dick. A lot of heat being thrown off by these fans here as they're shouting defense, defense, defense. And the pressure certainly has shifted now to the Bengal defense. They have an opportunity to make something happen here. They've got Brian Seif with his back right against his own goal line. From the six-yard line, and knowing Seif and the Browns, he'll probably throw. He often does in this situation. Nope. He gives to Pruitt, and Pruitt gets only a couple of yards. Cameron, 50, 79, Browner. What a game he has played today. Edwards all in on the tackle. Russ Browner had a fine start on the season. A, really a playing extremely well, and then was injured and had a tough time through some of the central part of the season. Has now come back strong here on the final part of the year. And I think part of the credit uh, for what we've seen emotionally on the part of this Bengal defense today has to go to Hank Muller, who really has done a good job of getting this team to accept and learn to play that 3-4 defense. And it's a tough 3-4 that they're playing. Calvin Hill and Mike Pruitt behind sight from his own end zone. Complete, incomplete. Pruitt hit by Breach just as he caught the ball. And Griffin, the touchdown maker earlier in this quarter, took it in just in case. Again, the kind of catch that we have seen several times uh, that takes that ball loose. Watch Pruitt get it, turn right back into the shot there. Obviously, the ball not under control. Sipe will have a third down and about well, eight and a half, eight yards to go anyway. A score, Merlin Olsen, of interest. The Oilers have scored and tied Minnesota. That's late in the third quarter. Tony Fritz's field goal gets the Oilers even after Stabler and Casper hooked up on a touchdown pass. Sipe on third down, going long for Rucker. Almost caught by Rucker. He was battling Ray Griffin for the ball. Put on your helmet. You can get down there and get a little feeling for what it's like to be in the backfield with Brian Seif. Watch the shot he'll take right at the end. Whoops, didn't get a chance to see that. But now watch Rucker go up and fight for that ball. I think if there's one thing that comes through to you watching these Cleveland Browns, it's the quality, the catching ability of their receivers. Great concentration. Montgomery at the Cleveland 44. Evans to kick from his own end zone. Short. Montgomery at the 39. Ran into his own man, and down he goes at the 38-yard line. He's mad at himself. He had a chance to get some yardage out of that and went the wrong way. 31-yard kick. Not a good kick by Johnny Evans. Oh, my. Wow. New Orleans has come. And that's with 14 minutes left. Manning to Wes Chandler, a 23-yard touchdown. And the Saints, who won their first game last Sunday against New York, are ahead of favorite New England. Cleveland, 24. Cincinnati, 17 here. Brown's ball. It's a big guy, Johnson, powering to about the 35-yard line with six minutes left in the third quarter. Here's Pete Johnson hit right into the stack at the line of scrimmage, and when he finally got through moving ahead, he picked up about three and a half yards. He just drove them all through. I can bulldoze it. Well, those have been 34-tough yards earned by Johnson today. Meanwhile, his counterpart, Mike Pruitt, has been the only ball carrier for Cleveland. He has 12 yards rushing in seven attempts. Sold out at Riverfront on a cold, clear Sunday. It's Johnson on a pitch. 
And a good play by Clay Matthews, number 57, fought off the blocker, made the stop after a two-yard game. The omnipresent Lyle Alzado, also a piece of the tackle. What an excellent play out there by Matthews, taking off on the one-on-one -on -one block, getting away from the block, and then sliding to the outside. And as we told you, that's a 260-plus pound ball carrier. Matthews doing an excellent job of neutralizing his drive, finally got some help in taking him down. Third down, a long five at the 33 of the Browns. The Bengals, a touchdown behind. Curtis moves out as a wing right. Blitz. Thompson. To Curtis. First down at the 19. Fine catch by Curtis in heavy traffic. Thompson back. We'll be seeing pressure from Bradley up the middle, but Bradley overran him. Good job of blocking interior line. And then a perfect strike to Isaac coming across the middle. He puts him in there for a big, big first down. Mike Wilson, 77, did a good job of picking off the pressure after Thompson. First down. Alexander up the middle. Oh, he came within a man of breaking that for a touchdown. It is 24-17 Cleveland here in Cincinnati. Let's get an update from Bryant. Dick, down in the Superdome, the Saints are going for their second win, and at the same time trying to knock the Patriots out of the playoff picture. Archie Manning from West Chandler has put the Saints in front 27-24 in the fourth. Dick? Well, Pete Rosell must be very proud of what he has watched this year. How can you construct a season with so many question marks coming down to the final minutes of play? And the Saints many, uh, playing so proudly as Bengals are playing here. So many hearts in their throats, too. <laughs> He does a bubble. Who's got it? Cincinnati. But a loss back to the 14-yard line as Johnson unable to handle the handoff. And it's been amazing we haven't seen more fumbles today. Well, I think that's a credit to the kind of ball. These, these two teams don't toss the ball up easily. That one just dropped by Johnson on the handoff. And it looked like uh, the quarterback, Thompson, who jumped right back in there and fought for that football with Charlie Hall, number 59. He was the man who recovered it. Third down, six at the 15-yard line. Two I minutes and 45 seconds left in the third quarter. Well, yeah, there's confusion on who was supposed to come out of there. Obviously, uh, that will be resolved with a timeout for the Cincinnati Bengals. 2.45 left third quarter. Warwick Drake's team in position to possibly tie it. They drill 24-17. Mm -hmm. Merlin Olsen, Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. Temperature in the teens. Cleveland Browns have rallied in this third quarter to take the lead 24-17. Back-to-back -back touchdown passes from Brian Seif to Ricky Feature. But the Bengals on third and six. Have it at the Brown 15-yard line. This is in the frozen end of the field. Out of a triple right. It is incomplete to McAnally, who complained he was held. At both Curtis and McAnally down on the goal line. In comes the field goal unit. Little Jim Breach will try to get three out of this drive. Clay Matthews, the man uh, coming from his linebacking position who forced that early throw. Matthews has uh, been effective in the pass rush as a blitzer this year. I think Thompson certainly feeling the pressure, flipped a little early, and again, a timing pattern. The timing uh, of the receiver knocked off by the defensive back. The ball fell incomplete in the end zone. 28-yard attempt by Breach is no good he missed to the left so the browns will get it at the 20 yard line as the bengals come up empty certainly a, a costly miss because had they made that then they get a touchdown they go ahead in the ball game now they need a touchdown to tie I don't think Pat McAnally 
is very happy with the call by the official on that last play. That was the play down on the goal line where he thought he received a late bump. Ken Fouts, our director, Mike Weissman, our producer. Excellent crew with NBC Sports covering this game in Cincinnati. Feature to the left, he's replaced Dave Logan, and has he ever? Rucker right. Greg Pruitt, his first carry today. Net fumble! And the Bengals have it! No, no, the Browns, they say the ball was dead. That Pruitt was already down when he fumbled. The official is saying that the ball popped out as he hit the ground. And that's the kind of thing that will happen on a frozen and hard turf. Let's let you look at it yourselves. Pruitt getting outside. Great play by LeClaire from the inside. Ball bounces loose. Let's see it again. Different angle. Wow. Tough, wow. Tough. Right on the back of Mike Pruitt, number 43, but at the same time fielded in part from the official. Difficult for him to see. I, I think I would have to side with Cincinnati. I think it was a legitimate fumble. But the Browns get a break. It's second down and eight. Newsom in motion. Sykes down the middle. The incomplete. A Ricky Beecher. He had Cleo Miller wide open in the left flat. Another quick shot of the fumble, or non-fumble in this case. Watch him as we, he goes up the back here. Can we play it backwards? Can we go reverse on it and follow it, take it back the other way and see where that fumble occurs? wonder if we can reverse that, Mr. Weissman. Can you take it back the other way, or do we have that facility? <laughs> we put the pressure on the folks I down know, there. I don't, mean, I don't mean to do That's that. That's second time to look at it. Ball being stripped away as he uh, before he hit the ground. A question maybe about his knees. Were his knees on the ground? Difficult for us That's to tell. Right. It's a tough ball. Third and eight. Offside, I believe. Yes. Down the middle, incomplete. But the Bengals were offside. Stipe on the ground. He took a shot as that ball was delivered. He's holding his leg, Dick. He hasn't gotten up yet. There he is, Brian Stipe. Doug Deacon. I said he's all right. He's going to get up. He's a tough guy. Now, I talked about him lacking physical stature. He does not lack courage. He is a very courageous young man and a very bright young man. I, I've really been pleased to see the kind of recognition he's finally received in this year because he's been playing excellent football for quite a while and perhaps uh, only appropriate that he would receive that recognition this year. All right, here's that play by Greg Pruitt again. Watch the knee. And we'll try to pick out when the ball is free. The ball is now free. Well, <laughs> it's a fumble. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a fumble. Right? But again, awfully close. We get the advantage of slow motion. That's right. The official is calling in live action. Third down after the penalty and three for the first down. Sipe almost intercepted by Reggie Williams. Actually broken up by the Browns intended receiver. Greg Pruitt. Uh, we talk about it frequently. When the ball is in danger of being intercepted, the roles are reversed, and suddenly the offensive receiver becomes the defensive back. Watch Greg Pruitt strip the ball out of Reggie Williams' hand, taking the interception away from the linebacker. Johnny Evans in for an apparent punt. Leo Montgomery at the 40 of the Bengals. Evans has had a poor day punting the football today. His punts have been short and low and returnable. 41 is longest thus far. This one's short again. Montgomery at his 44 fumble. And the Browns recover at the 43 yard line. Dino Hall again. Twice today. The Bengals unable to field the punt. And Dino Hall, the man on the spot, both times for the Browns. Again, the ball kicked short. Up to get the ball. Leota has it in his hand, and then makes the mistake, I think, of looking downfield to see where he was going to run with that football. Boy, you can't run with it until you've caught it properly. And again, that's, that's kind of off timing. Short punt like that sometimes causes problems for you. 
Watch the catch right there, or non catch. He drops it back through and alertly. Dino Hall right on top of it. From the 43, Stipe trying to take advantage. Goes deep. Intercepted and dropped as a fine effort by Lewis Breeden. As they have been picking on Breeden all day on that side. And he may be hurt. And that was just from the way he collided with this frozen carpet. We talked about how hard that turf is. And as, as it gets colder, it will get harder. Breeden stretching, giving everything he had. Ended up right on his nose on that turf. Breeden had a big week last week. Three big interceptions in that Chicago victory. Of course, burned earlier today, as you said, Dick. Apparently, he's going to be all right. A minute and 24 seconds left in the third quarter. Because of the injury to McAnell, and we must have had about a 10-minute delay in the first quarter while they attended to him to make sure, certain it was not serious. This game running much longer than your normal contest, but, boy, today there aren't many average games. There's so much at stake throughout the National Football League. Maybe... This is a good time to run down all the scores for you. If I may have the master list, we'll just give you all the scores. Minnesota and Houston tied in the fourth quarter. Of course, that has implications along with this one. New England has gone back in front at New Orleans, 31-27. Oakland leading the Giants as expected in the third quarter, 27-10. Detroit. They're out of the playoffs, but trying to finish with a win. Been a good comeback here for the Lions. They're ahead of Green Bay. Washington pounding St. Louis 24-0. Heavy rumors that Jack Pardee may not remain as the Redskins coach. His team has played very well this last month. Of course, the other games will be later today. Second and 10. Griffin has replaced Breeden at the left corner. Pruitt. And Miller behind Sykes. To the sideline, incomplete. Willis Adams, or as Berlin pointed out, that's like trying to catch a rock. And it went right through his hand. One of the interesting innovations in the game, Dick, uh, more than many years ago, if you showed up on the field with gloves on your hand, they called you a sissy. But, but most of the receivers, most of the linemen, many of the linebackers, on cold days now wearing a new kind of glove that really does allow for good, a good grip on the football. When they practice with it, they can catch the ball pretty well with it. Keith Wright is in the game for the first time as a receiver. He's to the left. He's caught three passes this year, all touchdowns. Wright, and he's on the left side. Wright in trouble. asking Calvin Hill what happened. Obviously the man he wanted out of that pattern. Eddie Edwards getting the crunch. Congratulations on the sideline. A 20-yard loss. A very big loss. And an emotional play. You need that kind of an emotional play to get things moving again. Now let's see if they gamble a bit. They may go after this kick. Nine men on the line of scrimmage. Now ten. With only Montgomery back at his 26. Montgomery at his 24-yard line. 36 seconds left in the quarter. A better kick that time by Johnny Evans. Boy, that young defensive line of the Bengals, and as you pointed out, Merlin, how they've improved defensively this year from last in the league last year to ninth going into this game. Number one draft pick, Edwards in the first round of 77. Whitley was a first-round pick, 77. Ross Browner, a first-round pick in 78. They're really building around that core, and do they have talent and have shown the Browns that talent today? Cleveland has not seen a pass rush like that all year. The flag is against the Browns. Mark Bright, the referee. The illegal man downfield, number 80, offense, fourth down. Willis Adams down prematurely before the punt, so Evans will have to kick it over. 24-17, Cleveland with the lead, about to give it up to Cincinnati on the punt. They have 
had the return on this time. They held up the outside man pretty well. Short kick. Look out. <laughs> That's how they got in trouble last time. That's just before the half. Ball rolls dead at the 41-yard line, grabbed by Ricky Beecher, 83. So the Bengals have it again with 23 seconds left in the quarter. That was only a 27-yard punt by Evans. Now the penalty cost Cleveland 17 yards. Jack Thompson, young quarterback, all the way for the Bengals. Kenny Anderson injured. Thompson to throw. Going long, got back and alley open. as we said, turning completely around, taking the ball dead over his head. The toughest kind of catch in the book. Oliver Davis, 21 there, and bounced, he actually bounced right off the top of the defensive man and went on into the end zone. Willie Mays would have been proud of that one. So McAnally, it looked as if he was guessing it was going to be farther to his right, was able to come back and with a left hand keep it in his grasp. It just didn't appear he had any chance to catch that football. Let's give Thompson some credit for an excellent pass, too. A long pass, powerful pass. Now Breach kicks it off. The Browns and Bengals are even. Keith Wright at the 20. He's at the 30, and he's hit at the 32-yard line with three seconds left in this crazy third quarter that opened with Ray Griffin intercepting Sipes for a touchdown. And the Browns got two quick scores on Sipes to feature touchdown passes. And the one you just saw, Thompson to McAnally, is fine a play as we've seen all year. I think we've talked about the intensity of this rivalry. It's a divisional rivalry. These teams go head to head every year. And this is the kind of game they've been turning in. They fought to a 15 13 game last year one that the Browns eventually lost and cost them a playoff berth. We told you there's nothing that Cincinnati would rather do than put them out of it again this year. Sipes to Pruitt. Mike Pruitt to the 40-yard line. Very close to a first down. Jim LeClaire, Bo Harris made the tackle at the end of the third quarter. Oh, my. Mr. McAnally with his highlight catch has tied the game. We go to the fourth quarter. Dead even. The Cleveland Browns 24. The Cincinnati Bengals 24. This enthusiastic sellout crowd at Riverfront Stadium. Both Bengals and Browns fans have had their chances to cheer and to moan and dismay. But the play has basically been very exciting considering the weather conditions. Mike Pruitt has a first down for the Browns as we open the fourth quarter at the 46-yard line. The statistics through three quarters, almost dead even. Almost dead even. Uh, time of possession, very close. Yardage, yardage in favor of the Browns. But again, uh, big plays on the day. Sipe has had a few more, but no play of the day could have been bigger than that great catch by McAnally. One thing we have to reflect on, the importance of that missed field goal, that short field goal that Breach took off to the left in the middle of the third quarter. 
That run by Mike Pruitt put him over the 1,000-yard mark, 1,002 yards, with 19 yards today. Sipes complete to Newsom at the 49 of Cincinnati, a gain of almost five. And Sipes himself has gone over the 4,000-yard mark passing on the season with his performance today. Former catcher on the Little League World Championship team from Grossmont and El Cajon, La Mesa area of Southern California. He's been a champion and a star all of his athletic life. He's really a cool customer. He, you saw him there. He's, this looks like he's trolling the park a bit. That's what makes him so effective in a game like this. Second down, six. Newsom in motion. Through it. It's only a yard or two. 48 yard line. Tough defensive surge by the Bengals. Reggie Williams, the linebacker, helping Wilson Whitley and Jim LeClaire. Trying to run in behind Big Joe Delamalur over there. They've seen him in a trade with Buffalo before the season started. Able to sign him. He's an interesting case. He's very comfortable on a day like today. Grew up in Detroit. Played his football out there in Buffalo and then came here. Now that's from Detroit to Buffalo to Cleveland. You really got a Cornella there. He says, I like it. I'm a blue collar guy. I like playing for a town like Cleveland. Third and a long five for Sipes. Incomplete. Greg Pruitt hadn't looked for the ball, and Brian Sipes is really frustrated. Pruitt was never in the picture. He didn't know the ball had been thrown. Quarterback needs to have the attention of his receiver. Sight back, reach the defense, knows which man is open, and throws it to him. Now watch what happens. You gotta look for the football. And that's exactly what Sight is saying. Come on, you gotta look for the football. The Browns, with 12.44 left in the game, are tied at 24. Evans, it's a high angle. And a good bounce inside the 15-yard line. Out of bounds at the 14. Good kick by Evans. And in this tie game, we have a timeout. 12.35 left. It's even at 24. There's Merlin Olsen, Dick Enberg, Riverfront Stadium, one of the finest games we've seen all year. Tied at 24 in the fourth quarter. We were listening to those old Bill Stern tapes last night at our friend Jack Bailey's house. Game is almost playing like one of his portraits. He couldn't have built any more attention and emotion into this one than we've seen today from these two fine football teams. The Bengals now have possession. 12.35 left. Alexander up the middle. To about the 17-yard line. Well read by that Brown defense, Robert L. Jackson, who has played brilliantly despite injuries again this year, but healthier than he has been. Key tackler, ball at the 17, call it second and seven. Casey joined us late. Jim Breach kicked the field goal early to give the Bengals the three nothing lead. Then Thompson scrambled 13 yards for a score to make it 10 nothing Cincinnati. Sipe to Rucker, 42 yards, 10-7. We're tied at 10 on a Cockcroft field goal just before the half been tied at 17. It's now tied at 24. Thompson almost fumbled. Now he gets it away incomplete. Thompson ever so close to having that ball stripped away. See the smile there. He realizes he dodged a bullet there. Watch him here. He feels the rush coming from the inside. Gets away from it briefly. Knows he's going to be trapped by Alzado there and just threw the ball away. Now, wow. You've got to be lucky. That you don't throw that to one of those guys in the white shirt. Perfect triangle of Browns, and the ball landed in the middle. Pete Johnson comes out. McAnally split left. So you'll go with only one running back here out of the shotgun, Alexander, with now Curtis flanking right. Third and seven. Thompson going to run it. Look 
by Thompson as he teared up at his opponent. You'll see why Thompson runs out of the shotgun here. Takes a quick look and sees no one up the middle and didn't hesitate. I think he that's a call play. There. You think it that's a call play? Either that or an option to, uh, to run up the middle. It's possible, but he did take that quick step back, saw how open it was up the center. And again, we talked about the mobility, the importance that that adds to the ability and to the performance of the quarterback. From the 32, oh, what a hit by Henry Bradley as he met Pete Johnson straight up. And you don't stop Johnson cold like that very often. You can hear those pads crack all the way up here in the booth. Bradley was sought and brought to Cleveland by Tommy Prothro, who knew of him after San Diego picked him in the ninth round in 78. And as a free agent, he has paid some rich dividends. Henry Bradley playing that nose guard. Curtis left, McAnally right. Second and ten, play action. That's Bradley after Thompson gets it away, incomplete. Clay Matthews knocked it away. Dan Ross, the intended receiver, he said he had a hand on me. The right hand was on me while he batted the ball away with the left hand. Thompson back uh, fighting for his life. He feels the pressure. He's got pressure coming from the outside. He runs to the outside. Again, trying to buy a little time. That's Bradley coming at him strong. Gets the ball off. But a good defensive play. Whoops. <laughs> Pete Thompson jumps into the dirt out there. I'd say those quarterbacks take quite a beating after they throw the football, too. They earn their living. They may make a good contract, but they make their trips to the training room, too. Born in American Samoa, Jack Thompson, third and ten. Got a man open. Ross all the way to the Cleveland 34 yard. was victimized for well over 400 yards last week by Minnesota. Most of that yardage coming to tight ends and back. This pass, of course, to a tight end who's broken clean. No one on him. Ron Bolton, the closest man, finally makes the stop. But Ross did an excellent job finding the open territory. Thompson got the ball into his hands. And Sam Ritigliano shaking his head saying, hey, who's supposed to cover him? That's Marty Schottenheimer, the defensive coach, trying to answer the question on the sideline. Now the Browns aren't the only ones that have had trouble covering Ross. Oops, Mike Wilson, 77, before the snap. Let's finish up the Don Ross story. As you pointed out, Merlin, in terms of the national pro attention, he's not really attracted that much. But Dan Ross has caught more passes than Ozzie Newsom, for more yards than Ozzie Newsom, and more touchdowns than Ozzie Newsom. He's had a, very quietly, had a great year. First down. And with his four catches today, Dan Ross has 55 for the year. Not a bad season. Not a bad season at all. And a young man who will get better. First and 15 from the 38 of Cleveland. Ross in motion. Draw. Well read by the Browns defense. And Charles Alexander corralled by Robert Jackson. And Alexander Jackson having words. In fact, you saw Alexander kind of flail a little bit at the Cleveland linebacker. Jackson turned back to him, tapped his chest. He said, you want more of me? I'm here. Come find me. <laughs> you gotta, you got to feel for the emotion in this game. These two teams really going at each other. And the cardiac kid, they're, they're doing it to us again. The end of the play here, Alexander will come quickly off the ground. You see the little bounce on the helmet there. A little flight from Alexander. Intentional or unintentional, doesn't really matter. They're both a little picked off there. Back in L.A., complete at the 22. It'll be another Bengal first down. 16 yards, Thompson to McAnally. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. WKYC TV Cleveland Television, home of the Browns. Dick Enberg and Merlin Olson, Cincinnati's Riverfront Stadium. 24-24 tie with eight and a half minutes left. The Bengals going nowhere but home for the holidays, but trying to finish the year with four straight wins against the Browns, who need a victory desperately to assure a playoff spot. 
Johnson to the 20 yard line. Alzado with a tackle. That's the latest on that New England, New Orleans game. As you know, should the Browns lose, they would need an upset by New Orleans over New England to get a wild card berth. And we want to bring all you Browns fans up to date the latest from New Orleans. New England leads 31 27 with 10 minutes left. Second and nine. Intercepted. Tom Dart at the 20. At the 30. All the way to the 33. The all-time pass interceptor in Brown history. They have made the biggest of the year for it. That's just what it looked like. The Cincinnati Bengals were going to earn those briefcases. Jack Thompson throws a bad pass. He's a young quarterback. He just made a great pass. This one goes over the head of the intended receiver, and that is so costly when you're throwing into traffic right there. 27, Tom Dart in position, picks it up, out to the outside, and although he's tackled, he makes the big play for the Cleveland Browns. The Bengals' long drive to a possible lead ends on this interception. And Ross offside, just a little quick turnaround move, but that ball must be thrown low. Cannot go high because it goes right into the secondary. And that's a costly mistake, but a mistake made by a young quarterback who will make that kind of mistake until he gets more experience. Tom Darden returned it to the 33. Sykes. Incomplete through the hands of Reggie Rucker at the Cincinnati 45. Other scores of interest well we'll get to that right after this and this almost was a reverse play ball bouncing out of Rucker's hands and the receiver cannot afford to do that either because often that tip will go right into the hands of a waiting defensive back look at that one Merlin oh Minnesota leading Houston in the fourth quarter and we understand there's two minutes left in the game in New Orleans with New England leading 31 27 two minutes left everything going to the wire today right down to the end of it Cardiac weekend. Snipe to feature intercepted by Ken Riley at the 34 of Cincinnati. <laughs> Veteran Ken Riley, he is the leading interceptor all time in Bengal history. That's his 47. Ken Riley's been around for 12 seasons. And one thing he's learned is that when that ball is in the air, belongs as much to him as it does to the receiver. He makes an exceptional catch. Goes up and takes it away from the intended receiver. Big play for the Bengals. They're back in the middle of it again. Seven minutes, 37 seconds left. And it's uh, 24 times. A little confused identity there. He thinks he's a reindeer. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Nor have the Browns and Bengals. Turnovers, four for Cincinnati, three for Cleveland. Sipe intercepted for the second time. And it's the 34 of Cincinnati as Pete Johnson breaks a couple of tackles and gains five yards out to the 39. That roar, obviously, for Pete Johnson. We told you at the beginning of the game, he's gone over 100 yards back-to-back -back four games. He doesn't have that kind of yardage today, but I think that a great deal of that credit must go to the ability of that uh, Cleveland defense to play against the run. Seven minutes, ten seconds left. McAnally left, Curtis right, a tie game, second and five. Whoa, almost a fumble by Archie Griffin. As he's hit at the 41-yard line, Griffin was having difficulty maintaining that handoff. One of the things that happens to you when you don't play a great deal, somehow the emotion really does change the game. You get into a game and the timing changes. Things that are done that seemingly at full speed in practice are done even more quickly on the field during a game. Archie has not played a great deal. That might have been part of the, part of the problem to be had trouble getting a handle on that one. Gain of a yard, third and four. 
From the Bengal 40-yard line, Swift. Thompson to throw. Incomplete through the hands of Curtis. And the Browns will get the ball back. They were coming hard. The Browns, not a team that runs the blitz very often, but they've done it quite often today to Jack Thompson. Thompson uh, had to fire that out of there as Judson Flint came from his safety position, put the pressure with him, put the pressure on him, along with several of the other uh, members of that uh, crew. Clinton Burrell, the cornerback, was also in on the blitz. Double safety blitz. <laughs> You're really throwing them at, throwing them in there on that one. Back in L.A. with Wright and Paul standing inside the Cleveland 25. Short kick. He almost missed that one completely. And a break for the Browns. It goes out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. Back in L.A. disappointed. He caught that one way out on the front end of his foot. We talk about peaks and valleys, highs and lows. You saw McAnally earlier. As he caught that incredible pass, you saw the heights of his emotion, and now you see the heights of his frustration as he makes a very bad play. Now it's Cleveland's turn. The master, Paul Brown, coached at Massillon High School, Ohio State University, Great Lakes Naval Academy, the Cleveland Browns, and the great days of Motley and Graham and Speedy, Lavelli, Duff Jones, and then eventually here, with a new franchise, the Cincinnati Bengals. 24-24 tie. 14-yard punt by McAnally, and Cleveland starts from its 45. Through it, gets four. I'd like to thank Bill Swarberg and Mike Leonard, player identification today here at Riverfront. Good job, gentlemen. Looking forward to the playoffs, and of course, there are all kinds of question marks left. And you'll be able to follow all the action right through to the Super Bowl here on NBC. This sure. telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Bengals and the National Football League is prohibited. Type the Newsom complete. Well thrown. He kept it low, and it's a first down at the Bengal 44. We talked about the young quarterbacks making mistakes. Sipe has had his share today, too, uh, two interceptions. But on this pass, the ball is well controlled, as you said. He's got to throw this ball low to keep it away from the defenders. He did exactly that, and he got an excellent reception on the other end of it for a first down. They're in the final seconds in New Orleans. New England still leading by four. Newsom with that last catch has four today and 50 for the season. Newsom in motion. First down. To Calvin Hill, complete. And Hill steps out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. No side patiently picking at that Bengal defense. The game even at 24, and the clock running down to 4.34. And the Cardiac Kids, obviously, are going to do it to their fans again. They're going to hold suspense right till the end. Again, a final, Merlin Olsen. The Raiders are in the playoffs. They beat the Giants 33-17. That's a final. Doesn't down. I think he'd like it suddenly. He'd like something to happen now. Something to have for his team. Well, he got something. Didn't want that. <laughs> That's not what he had in mind. And in a game as close as this one, you don't want to give up those timeouts. You saw Brian Seitz's reaction to having to do that. But again, interesting the kind of maturity that he has. He's not going to make the, the mistake, the cheap mistake. There's something interesting. Kenny Anderson warming up on the sideline. I wonder if he's going to get a shot late. That would be, uh, we didn't think he'd play. No, we certainly, he didn't think he'd play. He didn't think he could play. But maybe, maybe the adrenaline's been pumping. He's, that, that leg has gotten a lot better. That ankle's improved. He said, hey, I have to put me in, coach. I'll go. Thompson, when he came off the field the last time, looked as if he might have been poked in the eye. Remember he did. He, was, he did. It looked like he was either crying or laughing, one or the other, and perhaps he was poked in the eye. Then. Forrest Gregg is a disciplinarian. He's a tough coach. Some players don't like that kind of leadership, and some question how he would do here in Cincinnati. There were 
folks in Cleveland will tell you he was too tough on some of the players. But here in Cincinnati, this young team has really praised him. There's the final. New England does defeat New Orleans 38-27 to keep their hopes alive. And now that means Cleveland must win today or they are home for the holidays. Dick Ember, Kermit Olsen in Cincinnati, Ohio, Riverfront Stadium, Cleveland and Cincinnati are tied at 24. Cleo Miller drives to the 33 of Cincinnati. It appears to be close to a first down. Reggie Williams with a tackle. This game has gone back and forth. Cincinnati led 10-0 early. Cleveland rallied the tie at 10 at the half. Then an interception touchdown. Ray Griffin, 57 yards. Open the second half. Cincinnati led 17-10. Then Brian Seif hit Ricky Feaster two times on bombs to give Cleveland the lead, 24-17. And then an incredible catch by Pat McAnally of Cincinnati. A man carried off the field on a stretcher in the first quarter, tied it at 24. And now we're down to 350. The Browns must win to be in the playoffs. so heavily on the passing game during much of the year have gone increasingly to Pruitt here in this ball game. Pruitt finds a hole. Excellent blocking inside by De Leon, the rest of the offensive line. Pruitt explodes up through there. Big gainer down in easy field goal range, but knowing knowing Sykes, knowing Rotigliano, they want the seven. Greg exhorting his defense to take it away. Cut him out. Keep him away from that goal line. And a reminder again, Cleveland working in the frozen end of the field. Cincinnati missed a short field goal from this area in the second half. That's Cleo Miller inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. Very conservative call. Not what we'd expect out of the Cleveland Browns. Could it be that uh, Sipe and Rotigliano are changing their spots a little bit here late in this ballgame? Uh, with 2.43 in the clock running, the game tied at 24, and Cleveland on the mark. Brown, a team that will pass from its own end zone and now deep in the other team's territory has stayed on the ground. Sipe had told me earlier in the game, he said, we may be a little more conservative against this team today. They certainly have been that. Give to Pruitt. Big Ooh. hole. He's all the way to the six-yard line. First and goal, Cleveland. Pruitt now with 50 yards. Watch the hole open up for Mike Pruitt. Double team block on Wilson Whitley inside. De Leon doing a fine job. Also good help there from Shepard. Number 68, Robert L. Jackson. The man in there now in the guard position. But it's mostly the excellent explosive running of Pruitt that got them down inside of that 10 yard. Two minutes remain here at Cincinnati's Riverfront Stadium. Cleveland knows now that New England has won, so the Browns to make the playoffs must beat Cincinnati. It is first and goal. Arthur Modell, the owner of the Browns, across the way, looking right down on the action. First and goal outside the five-yard line. This has been a four-minute drive. The eighth play coming up. Ryan Seitz and the Browns. Five yards away from taking the lead against a very tough, aggressive Bengal defense today. He has Pruitt and Miller behind him. Pruitt, no gain. The Bengals pinching in and actually a loss of a few inches for Pruitt. All too often, uh, in fact, throughout the season, those have been passing situations for these Cleveland Browns. They just don't hesitate at all to put that ball up into the air. But they have been more conservative in this game, especially here in this final quarter. Got to believe that they might even take their three points if they have to, rather than to make a costly error or throw up a touchdown or throw up an interception. Perhaps a costly injury. Wilson Whitley, number 75, being attended to. Fine young defensive lineman for the Bengals. The signal by Referee Jerry Markbright was timeout Cincinnati. We'll see whether or not he's going to charge this one to the Bengals or call this an injury timeout. 
Apparently, according to the scoreboard, it will be charged against Cincinnati, giving them one timeout left in the game. The Browns have two remaining. Whitley apparently all right, leaving under his own power. What a game. The Browns, who have been a last-minute, last-second team the last two years, are doing it again. Browns and the Bengals. Ohio rivals playing for some bragging rights. The Browns defeated Cincinnati handily, one of the few easy wins for them all year, about a month ago, 31-7. to Rod Horn has gone in and placed the Wilson Whitley on this play, although I think we'll see Whitley if they can stop them here. I think he'll come right back in. Feature way out to the left, and Willis Adams to the right. Give it to Mike Pruitt. Boy, Pruitt, hungry for that end zone, almost turned the corner. Excellent pursuit, inside out. Glenn Cameron, number 50, number 27, Hicks, driving. But Mike Pruitt just using that great leg power and that leverage to turn the corner and get everything he could before he finally went out of bounds. Whitley comes back in. He is joined by another defensive lineman, Mike White, number 63, as Swartz Gregg will go with some added beef, takes out a couple of defensive backs. This is the ninth, tenth play of this drive. Third and goal at the two-yard line. Four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one. They just got it off. Sykes drops at the five-yard line by Ken Riley. They did not fool the veteran cornerback. Good bootleg by Brian Sykes, who's not known to run very often. They've run the ball three straight times. Sykes fakes it inside. Both backs coming in, takes it on his hip. But Ken Rattler Riley, number 13, just like a snake out there, saying, No, sir, you're not going anywhere, and put him down on the ground. Sykes found himself with not as much time as he wanted when he moved under center. The 30-second clock was down to four seconds, and he had to hurry the play off. So fourth and goal at the five, and Don Cockroft, the veteran kicker of the Cleveland Browns, with a minute and 29 seconds left, has a chance to give the Browns the lead. And earlier, from the same end of the field, it's slick, it's frozen down there. Jim Breach missed a short field goal that could have been could have made a significant difference in the outcome of this game. Cockcroft now on that same part of the field, and it is slick down there. Will have his chance, and the Bengal defense will have a chance to climb over the top and try and block that field goal. The Bengals calling a timeout, try to cool off the toe of Cockcroft from the 12-yard line, a 22-yard attempt. The Browns are in the lead. No doubt about that one. Right down the middle, but there's still a minute 25 left. The Browns and the Bengals. Ohio rivals tearing at each other. Cincinnati trying to deny Cleveland a playoff spot. The Browns have the three-point lead that would give them an opportunity to go on into the playoffs and toward that Super Bowl dream. But they're going to have to stop the Cincinnati team that has plenty of time but no timeout. And Ken Anderson apparently not expected to play at all. At least he stripped off that warm-up jacket is going to be the quarterback going to be the quarterback. It'll be his first play in several weeks. Working on an injured ankle. Uh, did not expect to play today. Did not feel that he was able to play today. But the adrenaline that pumps in the system of an athlete is a wonderful thing. He said, hey, I'm ready. If Jack can't go, we don't know what the injury was to Thompson, but maybe a finger to the eye, something to bother his vision. A minute and 25 seconds to go. Cartek kids have got to sample this again. And as you said, it, it is not over. It is not over yet. 
You wonder about Cincinnati electing to use a timeout when Cockroft was kicking that field goal. That could be a very important timeout denied the Bengals. Very high and quite short. All the way to the 20-yard line comes Montgomery, and he is tackled at the 32. Clock stopped with 119. Clock has ran two extra seconds. Actually, it was 120. Kicked off the 118 as a veteran from Augustana, Illinois. Ken Anderson, in his 10th NFL year, replaces Jack Thompson. Oh, what a strip. And you couldn't ask for a better man to step in. He's a precision passer. He's a veteran quarterback. He knows how to work the clock. He has the confidence of his teammates. Isaac Curtis up on a wing. Very loose Cleveland pass defense. Over the middle, complete to Curtis. Trying to use his speed, but he couldn't get away. And the clock is running, 109-108. Justin Flint, a good short tackle for the Browns. No huddle, they'll go quickly. Second down and seven. Anderson in trouble. Incomplete to Pete Johnson. Stops the clock at 52 seconds. Last week, the Browns had a two-touchdown lead plus midway through the fourth quarter, only to see the Vikings score three times and, of course, won the game on an incredible 80-yard drive in two plays, 14 seconds, on that squadron right catch when Ahmad Rashad picked it out of a crowd to deny the Browns a win. You wonder if that's planted somewhere in the back of their mind. Anderson down the middle, complete. Ryder all the way to the 43. The clock is running, 43, 42 seconds. The Bengals now wish they had one of those timeouts. 22-yard play, what a throw by Anderson. First down, over the middle, Ross. But the clock will run with us, he's to the 34. 23, you see the clock running. Anderson hurrying his team into formation. Throws this one away. 11 seconds left. Oh, my. Sam Rotigliano, I don't think there's a doctor's x-ray that could handle what's happening inside that band. It would look like an anthill. I think he's done it to all the rest of us, certainly to the fans in Cleveland. But what an exciting game. And appropriately, the way this team should finish their season, with everything still hanging in the balance, <laughs> with their defense on the field, hey, saying, let's stop them. You saw Sam say it right there. Let's stop them. Kenny Anderson, about to take the snap. 11 ticks left on the clock. Will he go for the touchdown or go for a field goal? Complete to Kreider, but I don't think they can get a playoff. It's a 14. It's over. The Browns are in the playoffs. And this big contention of Cleveland fans pouring onto the field. You could see what the intent was. Ryder was trying to catch the pass, hoping to get out of bounds and try a tying field goal. But a good hit kept him in the field of play. And Sam Rotigliano's Cleveland Browns have earned a spot in the playoffs. They are the champions of the AFC Central. Very emotional and great. Art Modell and his, his wife, his lovely friends there in the booth sharing a great moment of happiness. I'll tell you, they followed it all the way. That's Art White there on the right side of your picture. They're happy. Cleveland players, obviously, thrilled to be in the playoffs. They've earned it. They've had a fantastic season, Dick. They've taken it all the way to the end. There's the Cleveland Browns locker room. You'll see the happy Warriors as they come in to celebrate a hard-earned victory in a very difficult season. Nothing easy for the Browns. The most dramatic team of the National Football League comes down within 11 yards 
of extending their season. Nate Wallach, the veteran public relations man for Cleveland. The Browns fans came here, 10, 12,000, and it might have been the difference. They certainly offered support. Cleveland has beaten the Bengals 27-24.